the time draws closer when we're going to find out what happens in this dramatic story of the Northwestern Wildcats. Coach Gary Barnett's dramatic turnaround, one of the biggest stories of this decade in college football. Coach John Robinson has his USC Trojans back in the Rose Bowl for the first time since 1990. It's coming up next here on ABC Sports. If you like Tim and Jim, special holiday presentation. Happy New Year from ABC Sports. For all of us who once walked the halls of Northwestern University as students, uh, this New Year's Day is a heart-lifting experience. For nearly half a century, we, we've had to watch as others cheered their alma maters in college football bowl games. Now, at last, in 1996, it's our turn again. I was delighted to find that Darnell Autry, who leads the Wildcats offense and is fast becoming one of the best running backs in college football, is majoring in theater at Northwestern Speech School. That's where I studied acting. Whatever happens, it'll be a great day for the purple and white. presents the 50th Rose Bowl game matching the Big Ten and the Pac-10, the Southern California Trojans and the Northwestern Wildcats. The original bowl game being played in your perfect conditions today, the temperature up around 80 degrees. Hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson. A happy new year to all of you from all of us at ABC Sports. None of the players and only two of the coaches on the Northwestern football squad were born the last time the Wildcats played here in Pasadena. That was 1949. Thus, they have become one of the dramatic stories of the decade as they have made their way to the West. And we'll have a special feature on these Wildcats in just a moment. That year, and then again the next year, and the year after, and then they went 0-11 my senior year. That was probably the highlight. Uh, it's tough at times, uh, particularly when the uh, stands are are half full to starting the game, and by the end of the game, uh, even most of those people have left. Eric Parsikian was a winning coach at Northwestern over his eight seasons, but he never won 10 in a single year, and he never dreamed what happened could happen. Somebody would tell you that Northwestern was going to beat all these teams in 1995 and go to the Rose Bowl before the season started, they'd had your head examined. With Ohio State's loss to the Michigan Wolverines, the Northwestern Wildcats were the Big Ten Conference champions. Only once before it had that happened, and that was back in 1936, when Pappy Waldorf was the coach. Oh, it was indeed a magic season. And Coach Gary Barnett was the man of the year. He's the reason why I came here. I mean, he, you know, sold me on the, on the fact that we'd have a chance to turn things around and make something from the ground up. Will he stay? That's the biggest question. They're really treating me very well, and, and uh, whatever happens to me uh, will be a, a result of what's really best for my family. We want to hold our coaching team, the head coach and his assistant coaches, and we see that as a long-run phenomenon for Northwestern. He told me not to worry about it. He said a lot of things are going to come out in the press, and he said, I'm going to be your coach next year. This is where he's wanted, and this is where he's needed. Well, there isn't any reason for these kids to believe I won't stay here. And uh, this game and this whole event is about our kids, and, about, and they deserve uh, to have every bit of attention. This is not about me. An announcement is expected later this week uh, to define what Gary Barnett will do with 
his immediate future in coaching. But obviously everybody anticipates that he will stay at Northwestern University. And certainly his football team and the president of the university have expressed their hope and desire that he will remain there. And he remains also one of the figures in the speculation about what will eventuate at UCLA. So the warm sun shines down on the old oval in the city of Pasadena as the University of Southern California marching band directed by Arthur Bartner is out in the center of the stadium rearranging their formation now to present our national anthem. It is a festive day. It always is a festival when you tie in a football game of this quality with the Tournament of Roses. This being the 107th Tournament of Roses parade and festival, this being the 82nd playing of the Rose Bowl football game. Now, the USC marching band our and our national nation. anthem honoring the P5 and a P51 going across the Arroyo as we take this break. the same one sold at the game, and it makes a terrific souvenir. The Sugar, Fiesta, and Orange Bowl programs are also available. Call 1-800-769-8843 now. Kermit the Frog, the Grand Marshal of the 107th Rose Parade, theme being Kids Laughter and Dreams. The president of this year's Tournament of Roses, Bud Grice, seen here with his wife, Mary Lou. And the Rose Queen, Kelly Hutchins, a senior from San Marino High School. <laughs> <laughs> and now let's talk about the matchup with Bob Greasy and get some opinions and feelings you might have and moments before we put it on the team. Well, you know, Southern Cal, this is almost like a home game. I'm sure they're very relaxed, and I think they're going to come in and play well for, for, for Northwestern. they got to do what they got them here. they got to run the football. they got to play good defense, and their special teams have to be good. Southern Cal's had the best offense in the Pac-10. They need to get the ball to Kashawn Johnson, and their two-quarterback system has to work again today. Well, USC kind of feels like they've been left out of this party. Yeah. I mean... Frankly, bluntly, they're a little myth oh, about the uh, calling your attention now to the being so utterly dominant in all point, the three Tom. Rose Bowl. Yeah, but I think that's good in a way because there's Number no pressure on bad. USC and Number and and for Northwestern. They're getting no respect. They won 10 ball games this year, and they're still an underdog to a team that's ranked 17th in the nation. But that attitude and that perspective may well change before this thing is done, because the, the thing to me, Bob, is that Northwestern could go through a Big Ten season, including a game at Notre Dame, and only turn the ball over 12 times. That's well, important. they have given the ball away, the fewest in the Big Ten, and they've taken away more than anybody in the Big Ten. In fact, in the nation, they're third in turnovers. That's a key today. All right, we're ready now for the flip of the coin. Uh, Mrs. Jane Henson, the widow of the late Jim Henson, the co-creator of the Muppets, will flip it. And the referee uh, is Randy Crystal. He heads up a Southwest Conference crew. Crystal and Jane Henson for the official coin toss. Good afternoon, man. I have a couple of introductions. This is Joe Darden. He'll be your umpire. And Randy Crystal, I'll be the referee. This is Jim Henson, who will toss the coin. This is the commemorative coin. As you can see, we have Southern California on one side and Northwestern on the other. I will ask that Mrs. Henson toss the coin in the air, and the winner will be face up, and will have four options. Kick, receive, defend a goal, or elect to take your option the second half. Mrs. Henson, the coin. The winner of the toss is Southern California. Thank you very much, Mrs. Henson. So the Trojans have won the toss. They'll take the ball, and we join Lynn Swan on the field. 
Thank you very much, Keith. You know, if you listen to both head coaches, you would think there are two teams that are playing that have absolutely no respect from anyone. John Robinson, when he addressed his team, told his team, everyone believes that our team was dredged up to play the Cinderella Northwestern football team because we did not come into this game looking very good. But he said his game plan is going to be very simple. He is going to be much more aggressive and try and get on top of Northwestern very quickly. Coming into this ball game, they have not played very well in the first half. They want to improve that, so they want to come out aggressive initially in this ball game. Gary Barnett says, you know, we come out here with a great record, and it's not who we have that's playing this game, it's how we play the game. He told this football team that last night. He said he doesn't have to hype his football team. He never has all year long. What he is most concerned about is how his team is going to play after two weeks of no contact. They've been in Southern California for two weeks. They have not been physical. He wanted to make sure his kids had fresh legs. What he is hoping for is that his team will get themselves up. They'll come out, not be overhyped, and execute and play the best ball game of the year. Let's now go back upstairs to Keith Jackson. All right, Swanee, thank you very much. And uh, the turf is solid. Circumstances and everything about the day is just absolutely glorious. And we're ready to play football for the 82nd time. Over the past 81 years they played this game. There have been many with great drama. But few have matched the preamble leading to this one because of the great turnaround, as it is called the Cinderella story. Well, we've had all the romance. Now let's find out if she can dance. Keyshawn Johnson and Chris Miller are going to return this opening kickoff. One or the other if Ryan Goins can knock it down there to them. Ryan is the young man from Birmingham, Alabama, wearing the purple of Northwestern, and he hits it solid and drives it a yard deep into the end zone to Johnson. The great wide receiver from USC is taken down at the 17-yard line. Opening at quarterback for USC is Brad Otten, Jr. He's thrown for 12 touchdowns. His counterpart, Kyle Waholtz, has thrown for 11. The backs and receivers for the University of Southern California, Keyshawn Johnson must be a key figure in the Trojan offense today if they are to win this football game or even play well. Opening at tailback is Laval Woods. That's a surprise as I turns and throws underneath. The ball caught by Wood. He was a secondary receiver. Otten had time under the pressure to look around and find him, and they pick up about 13 yards on the play. Jeremy Hogue, who may become a Rhodes Scholar, had to be moved from center to guard because both people who had occupied right guard for USC not on the field today. And again, it's to the pass. And again, it is drilled to the numbers. And it is caught by Chris Miller, a junior out of Los Angeles, and moved the chains again. So USC opens up with the rifle attack. And they have it first down at the 42. To hurry up offense, strength against strength. Southern California likes the pass. Northwestern, number one in the Big Ten, against the pass. Wildcats show a four-man front. Otten back goes underneath again to Laval Woods. And Woods is up in front of Chidla, Arizona. Takes it up to midfield. That's a pickup of eight yards. And so they're moving it early in the game. So uh, the Trojans continue to go with a no-huddle offense. This has become uh, a new thing over the last couple of seasons. And early in the game, it can be very effective before the other folks get their... Spikes dug in. Here's a running play that goes nowhere. A loss as Woods can find no room at all in the middle of the Northwestern defense. Keith, one of the strengths of this Northwestern defense, one of the strengths is they want to get their nickel and dime package in as soon as they can. Holmes, 53, filling in for Fitzgerald, blitzing on the play. Northwestern says, all right, if you're going to throw on first down, we're going to get our five and six defensive backs in. That time they blitz. That's where they are best, blitzing and attacking. Rodney Sermons checks into the backfield. A little more foot speed with him. Also a pretty good receiver. Third down and four. Motion is Johnson. 
took off the pressure. The pass to Johnson. He's got a first down at the 45-yard line of Northwestern. Chris Martin stopped him at that point. Defensively, Donnie Holmes is the man, number 53, playing at that middle linebacker position, taking the place of Pat Fitzgerald, who led the Big Ten Conference in tackles this season. Pat broke his leg in two places in the game against Iowa, the 10th game of the season. First and 10 for the Trojans, and the ball is right at the 45, where it is a first and 10. Woods is back in the backfield now for the Trojans as they go to the shotgun. Center was high. Cotton's throw down the middle, got to Johnson. Keyshawn Johnson is down at the 15 yard line in front of William Bennett. Mike Riley, the offensive coordinator, saw some things in the Northwestern defense. That's just Bailey, number three, passing him on to the safety. Bennett. Bennett is an outstanding tackle, but there's no match for Keyshawn Johnson. You get deep. They wanted to throw the ball deep. You'll get some single coverage. Johnson has great size. He's 6'4 and 210. This is Woods. Caught the behind the line of scrimmage the by number three, Ismaili. At the 19-yard line. The defensive the secondary for Northwestern North is Western. a very good one. I mean, you just pick one of those guys and they'll take your hat yeah. off. But in particular, Chris Martin, who had five interceptions on the Second season. And had nine takeaways. Keep the fact he led the Big Ten in takeaways. Four of the defensive backs for Northwestern and three of the starters made all Big Ten first team or second team. Well, the Trojans have rushed the ball a couple of times, and each time they have lost yardage on the play. It's second down and 13. Underneath the pass, inside the 10, down to the seven-yard line goes Terry Barnum, the fullback. Down to the seven-yard line of Northwestern. Jeff Shane makes the stop for Northwestern. Brad Otten doing a nice job uh, of running this offense. Boys. It's interesting. He is 6 of 6 and 82 yards. Interesting that when John Robinson was here before, he was known as a three yards, a cloud of dust, or pitch the ball, student body right, student left, a running coach. Now, the other day, he says, in the last two years, he says, we've probably thrown it more than we should have. Well, I asked him yesterday, uh, or Saturday, or rather, if he's going to come out shotgun and five wide, and he left it. But he almost did penalty it. marker in the backfield. And a penalty flag the hits the deck for the first time today. As we told you, Randy Crystal heads a Southwest Conference crew of officials. Penalty Trojans. So they hurt themselves, and they've done that a lot this year. They have. They are ninth out of ten teams in penalties, averaging almost 75 yards per game in penalties, and that's not something that you want to be a part of, and I'm sure that Robinson is not proud of that. Ball's returned to the 12-yard line. Minus six running. They're 82-plus passing, and here they go now with third and eight instead of third and three. Johnny McWilliams. He's out of bounds at about the three. You get inside the 15-yard line against the Trojans, and you better watch their tight ends. McWilliams, 87. has caught 22 passes on the year, five for touchdowns, but all of their tight ends get in the act. Three of them have caught 12 touchdowns on the year, so in this area, watch the tight end. He gained three yards after he made the reception. That's important because it gives them a first and goal at the three. Elon Washington is the tailback. He's got the ball into the middle to the one. Second and goal from the one. Gain of two on the play. Washington is the normal starting running back. And because they have thrown the ball coming out, Washington, who has gained over 1,000 yards this year, didn't start and uh, has not seen too much action in this first drive. You've got three tight ends on the field now for USC. Mac Williams, Tyler Cashman, and John Allred. And they go to the I formation with Woods, the deep man. Here he goes over the field. They pull it out. And the ball is batted down. Left aside by Danny Sutter. So they belted the fullback, took it away, looked for the pass, and it was knocked down. 
was a nice play by Sutter because there was a man open in the end zone. The play action, the two tight ends on this side. Where's Sutter ball? right between the receiver. The man was wide open. Nice play by Sutter. Anybody within five yards of him. Quarterback should have faked, got him in the air, and then threw around him. They go back to the run. LaBelle Woods, touchdown. Nice play by Woods. Adam Abrams for the extra point. John Stonehouse will hold it. The punter. Tap is good. Kick is up. It's seven to nothing. Southern California. We use almost five minutes in their first possession to score. This is the Rose Bowl, in case you don't know. And in case you don't know, you sure have missed a lot of fun over the years. Guess who's back there to return the kickoff? Darnell Autry, along with Ismaili, who is a blitzing linebacker. Here's the kickoff for the Trojans. Bastianelli puts it right under the arms of Darnell Autry. Here comes the big star of the Big Ten. And he's across the 30 and up to the 31-yard line. The man at quarterback for these Wildcats, Steve Scherr. Only five interceptions. Of course, he didn't throw the ball as many times as a lot of the quarterbacks did. But when he does throw it, he is very accurate with it and makes very good decisions. But, of course, the man is Darnell Autry. 355 carries, 12 consecutive games. Over 100 yards. That's something. That's a lot of carries in one season, Keith. And here he goes again, hit behind the line of scrimmage. This was a point. This was a point that John Robinson hammered on. You must wrap the line, uh, the, the running back. You can't let him loose because he'll run right out of your arms and kill you. Rob Johnson anchors the offensive front for the Wildcats fibbed when they were looking for a center recruited as a linebacker he said yes I can play center well he's been there now for 45 or 46 consecutive starts it all back all Big Ten uh, this year too Keith. back goes Schnur looks and throws a bullet passes completed up at the 48 yard line to Dwayne Bates who was a red shirt freshman from Aiken South Carolina a converted quarterback if you will the defensive line and backers for Southern California. This big fella, Daryl Russell, 320 pounds, I think is going to have to have a good day. He's going to have to lead that defensive down front if they're going to contain Archery. Sano, uh, the linebacker there, Keith, making his first start as a true freshman. They're going to have eight men up near the line of scrimmage to stop the run and force the pass. First down for the Wildcats. They give it to Archery. Coming around the corner looking for some daylight. Penalty flag is thrown. You got a block in the back. Number 78, Brian Cardos. Got somebody at the wrong part of the anatomy. They got a hold instead of the block. But either way, it hurts them. Here are the defensive backs for Southern California. Sammy Knight, strong safety, very good at supporting against the run. Dalen McCutcheon, freshman last year. Played high school football. Yeah, Sammy Knight, in fact, uh, you oh, mentioned yeah. good against the run. He oh, leads yeah, the Trojans in tackles. We'll replay first down. From that well, to strong the safety position. Line of Northwestern. For Northwestern, let's take a look what they need to do. Keep on trucking on offense. That means run the football, first do what got you here. Punt if you have to. Defensively, continue to force turnovers the way they've won all year. In fact, 40% of their points have come off of turnovers. It's first down and 19 after the holding ball as Darnell Autry spins over the right side and will find a couple of yards and that'll do it. The man playing fullback for Northwestern, interesting uh, youngster, Matt Hartle. He's a redshirt freshman out of Denver. And if you have heard uh, in times past folks talk about a blocking back, well, you're looking at a, a new one, a young one, but he is really good. Not only, uh, Keith, uh, can he block, but he is the second leading receiver 
Eight of a yard on the also. So his job, like a lot of fullbacks in football these days, is block the tailback and catch the passes out of the back. First down. Well, the penalty against the Trojans will move it up across the 45 to the 46. And you'll be looking at first down and 14 for the Wildcats. Eight minutes and 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. Southern California's opening possession, 83-yard march touchdown. Yeshner rolling out, throws it back the other way, and it is incomplete. The ball thrown to Hartle, and it was too high. But Schnur was getting some Here's pressure and had to get rid of it quickly. Tonight on ABC, Robert Redford, Sidney Portier, and River Phoenix in the season. Second down and 14. Right at 80 degrees today. Schnur straight back. Man is open. Taken down as he makes the catch. Not quite a first down. It's just inside the 45. Dwayne Bates, who has pretty good size himself for a wide receiver at 6'2 and 208 pounds. The offense has been a little throwing to Bates during the season. In fact, he caught 42 passes in 11 games. And give the ball to Autry. Autry, if you don't make the first downs, don't force it on third downs. In fact, this team, Northwestern, is the poorest team in the Big Ten on third down conversions. And if you don't make it, just punt it away and play defense. That's why they don't have very many turnovers. That's exactly right. Don't force it. Little shovel pass into Hartle. Hartle's got a first down as he breaks it inside the 35 down to the Southern California 34. Now that's a big first down, Keith, because you had that holding penalty on the first play of the drive. It was like first and 15, first and 20, and they picked up the first down without turning it over. Little shovel pass, safe play, blocked there on Heron, number 10. Just smart play, and I think that's the key to this Nebraska success. Do what we can do, and don't do the things that we can't do. Ball given to Autry, and they're gonna take him down at just about the line of scrimmage, maybe a yard on the play. He's one of only two. Division 1A players to run for 100 plus yards in every game this season. The other was Tate from right. Toledo. Look at this offense, Keith. This will tell you a little bit about them. They're 91st in the nation throwing the ball. Total offense is 90th. That doesn't bother them any. They're the, they, they punt as, as much as anybody else in the Big Ten except one ball club. So they're not afraid to kick it. They know what they can do. Second down and nine. Schnurr looks and throws. It's caught. Great catch by Bates. Bates inside the five. First and goal, Northwestern at the two. From behind, little play action. Try to hold the linebackers and then run the slant. Great throw and catch by Bates. And a great move right here. Little spin. This is a big drive for Northwestern, getting the ball down after Southern California scored on their first possession. You can't catch him any better than that. That's a big play when you needed it. Put the ball exactly on the three-yard line where it is first down and goal. Guess who? No, he's going to throw into the end zone, and it is incomplete. The pass was intended for the tight end Shane Graham, 6'6", 274. Brian Kelly, a mere 190, knocked it away from him. Well, that was something that the Northwestern doesn't do a lot of, and that is throw on first down inside the five, but that's probably why Greg Meyer, the offensive coordinator, called that play throwing it to a tight end with only eight catches on the year because uh, a lot of scouting goes on for this game. Second down and goal from the three. Autry to the corner. Touchdown. <laughs> of all the running backs in the country, I think he can use leverage as well as anybody anywhere after he is hit. Leans that body and drives those legs. And so both teams now have scored in their initial possession. Oh, 
The point by Goins is good for Sam Valencici was a big, big story until he tore up his knee celebrating. <laughs> and the redshirt freshman has come on to replace him. That's a move by the Autry. Autry looked, uh, thought about inside, and then just lowers his head, and just determination gets it in. scoring drive reflected there three of the ten plays three big ones by Dwayne Bates totaling 57 yards including the very athletic catch and run to put him in scoring position so here's Goins kicking the ball deep Johnson drifts back four five yards in the end zone and he'll put a knee down and bring it out to the 20 on Saturday January 13 the season premiere of five by Northwestern it's been 47 years since the Wildcats have been in the Rose Bowl and they come out here Southern California stuffs them right on the first drive 12 plays Northwestern comes right back and evens it up at seven now let's see what the Trojans do as they start at the 20 working out of a shotgun Otten lets it go big he's got his man and it's too deep Chris Miller had a full stride on the defender and the ball was just a little too high for him. Trojans wanted to throw deep, but you can't throw it out of bounds. He was wide open. They need a rosy day for the quarterbacks for Southern California. They'll play two of them. And defensively, they need to stop the run. Autry, in particular, if you stop Darnell Autry, you'll stop the run. It'll be second down for the Trojans. Even six minutes to go first quarter, a 7-7 tie. Washington is the single back for USC. Martin back looking to throw again. Pretty good protection. Now he goes down. Mike Warren just kept on fighting and fighting and fighting and finally he got him. Northwestern will make you play every down. Take a look at the pass protection. It was good enough for Otten to throw this football. It just was too long for him. He just, the coverage sack got there. Nobody open in the secondary. Only the second sack on the year for Mike Warren. Northwestern, before today, has given up only two touchdowns in the first quarter throughout their entire schedule. They've been very stingy early in the ballgame. This pass is down the middle, and it's completed for a first down beyond the 30-yard line to Chris Miller. Well, you know they're climbing all over Keyshawn Johnson. So Miller becomes very obvious and uh, that time went up and made a reaching catch. Here he is right here in the slot. He's just going to go down and break to the inside. Watch the defensive backs as they drop back. That's the zone. They're covering areas, not people. And it's a little easier to get open against zones than it is man coverage. It also makes Johnson more available, doesn't it, because of his size? Oh, yes. That Big. pass is too hot. He knows how to run good routes against zones. Terry Barnum, the fullback, out of the backfield. And the ball was thrown over his head. Terry's 5'10", 200. Here's a look at the Wildcats. Take a look at this for a second. In the Big Ten scoring, they lead the Big Ten. Also, they lead in the nation. Turnovers, they lead the Big Ten. They're third in the nation. Those two big reasons why they are where they're at. They're at where they are. Ball is drilled to Larry Parker, and Parker's taken down at the 40. They're going to need about five yards for the first down. Southern California, to give you an idea of how things have changed over at Troy, here in this first quarter, they have 120 yards in passing. They're minus 13 in running. That's tailback you you're talking about. But life is different these days in college football. Things have changed. Philosophies have been changed. 85 scholarship has helped do some of that. That ball is thrown like a bullet right into the receiver, Johnson. Johnson makes the catch. He is just beyond the 45. And that is just enough for a first down. Let me go back and clean that up, what I was saying about they are where they're at and they're at where they are. The reason <laughs> Northwestern is in the Rose Bowl is because of this defense and Darnell Audrey and Gary Barnett. I mean, <laughs> Gary said he likes the matchup of his defense against the passing offense. That ball is intended for Chris Miller and again is thrown too high and thrown too far to the sideline. 
Eric Collier had the coverage on the play. Yes, Collier, who is a real hitter out of that backfield defensively, sophomore from Dixon, Illinois. Dixon, Illinois. Didn't uh, former President Reagan come from Dixon, Illinois? I Was believe he? he did. Collier's a fine player, Keith. He was a second team All Big Tenor this year. As I mentioned, four of uh, the defensive backs and one of the starting defensive backs didn't make All Big Ten. It was one of the backups, uh, Ismaili, number three, who gets in there uh, quite a bit. Billy Miller is in the game now. He is a star of the future, they think, at USC. Big freshman. Lavelle Woods is a single back. He's got the ball. Pucks to the outside. No, he doesn't either. He fooled me. Ott running to the outside, trying to get it away. And again, you can call it a coverage sack because nobody was available. The only man that was slightly available would have been the tight end Cashman. Here's Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, with all the passing that USC is doing early in this ball game, keep your eye on number 80, Larry Parker, when he's in the ball game. He has not been the most productive receiver for USC, and he comes into this game with a slightly aggravated hamstring. Now, when he made that last catch, he was trying to make a couple of moves on the inside, came up, grabbed his leg just a little bit, so I think it continues to bother him early in this ball game. Keith? Well, I don't think this is a game where there's, there's going to be a whole lot of appreciation for dancing. You've got to go north and south against Northwestern because they're going to do it to you. Delon Washington is in the backfield now as Otten drops the pass, gets it away. He is under pressure, seemingly struck just as he delivered the ball, and it was sort of a wounded goose that went out of bounds and incomplete. So the Wildcat defense does a little better job of things, and Otten is walking very gingerly as he leaves the field. Had some pressure on him, had the linebackers blitz him, one of the safeties was coming. John Stonehouse checks in now to do the punting, and this will send Brian Musso deep to receive it for Northwestern. His daddy, Johnny Musso, I remember him well. The Italian stallion played for Paul Bryant at Alabama, was an All-American running back. Living in Chicago most of the today. years, yeah, since he played for the Bears. Yeah, Johnny's on the sideline, I heard. That's a low line drive, gives him a little bit of room, but he can't get up to make the catch because it's short, and so it'll roll around and roll dead at about the 17. With three minutes and nine seconds remaining to play in the first quarter, we're all even at seven for Northwestern and seven for Southern California. Ball rests at the 18, right on the 18-yard hash mark at 3.09 to go in the first quarter. 7-7 ball game. Gary Barnett expecting most everybody expects that he will make some kind of an announcement toward the end of the week as to what he plans to do and there was an awful lot of indication that he plans to stay right where he is but we don't know that for sure right now about the Wildcats and the running attack has not done much to this point but here comes Darnell Autry he's 5'11 he's 209 pounds he is a sophomore and he comes out of Tempe Arizona and every time he runs that football Bruce Snyder over at Arizona State prize alone here's a great uh, view of uh, what he does watches the offensive lines go to fire off he starts inside and then bounces to the outside he's got good feet there's nothing here to begin with right here so he bounces out he is patient. He doesn't run up the back of his offensive lineman. He's got good vision and patience. That's why he slid to the next hole. Here he goes again. Kind of searching his way along. And he'll pick up a yard or so on that carry. But I, it, it's unusual to find a, a player this young with that much patience. Exactly, Keith. Uh, you know, when he first came, he didn't have a lot of patience. He came from... Uh, from Arizona and he was getting a little bit homesick and uh, and uh, homesick twice and his dad says no no son you're staying you made a commitment you're going to Northwestern and it's worked out uh, for the best by far second down and eight Schner looking over the middle gets it off deep and it is incomplete and he's put on his back pass was way way beyond the possible reach of Wayne Bates who was flying downfield with double coverage yeah double coverage exactly Keith there was nobody open and Schnurr just threw that away but again the the philosophy on every play put the quarterback on his back and it takes its toll that's really the first time that he's been put down with any force third down and eight Double wide, bottom of the screen. 
Looks that way. Flips him underneath. Got a screen set up for Brian Musso. And he's got a first down for the Wildcats. Very close to midfield. That's why they like Schnur so much. He sees the field well, and he makes quick, good decisions. And Musso, the third wide receiver in this group, plays a lot and can run once he gets the ball. He is the punt returner, so he's got a lot of ability after he catches the football. He can run with it. Lavelle Brown checks in at the fullback position now for Northwestern. First down, just short of midfield. Schnur back, turns around, and lets it go down the middle, and it's incomplete. That was a dangerous throw because it was Micah Phillips who had a chance to intercept it. Micah Phillips, depending on the play for the protest. Mark Cusano comes back onto the field now for the Trojans, and Phillips leaves. Talk about experience, Keith, in bowls. Look at USC has played in 37 bowls, 27 Rose Bowls and won 19. Northwestern has been in one Rose Bowl and won it. There's Cassano who had just come back. He's a young from Texas. Freshman, Schnur, a lot of time. Completes the pass to Brown. So it doesn't work one way, come back the other way and throw it hard enough, quick enough, and straight enough, and you'll get your reception. And that's what he did. Well, Keyshawn Johnson waiting on the bench. Foremost member of the USC offense. He's the best player on this field today, Keith. No question about that. He's had an outstanding career in the last two years. He was a junior college transfer when he came to the Trojans. He was a ball boy over there yes, in the practice was. field. And this one isn't bad right here. Awesome. Third down and two. Schnurr's pass to the sideline. Didn't Strong see it. Quickly, and the receiver, Dave Beasley, never saw the ball. Didn't see it. Looking back into that sun. So you got 45 seconds left to play in the first quarter. And actually, Beasley was open. And Schnurr threw the ball pretty well. It just whistled right by his ear. And David never saw it. So they'll kick it. Paul Burton, son of Ron. And all the Burton boys have played at Northwestern. Paul well, Burton is not formation for Northwestern. Ron Burton once stood uh, in a booth with me right where you are standing. Really? Yep. We did a game in White Laramie, Wyoming. Larry Parker is the deep man to return it for Southern California. If you got any tricks up your sleeve offensively, this might be a good time to try them, Keith. Fourth and one. Well, that's a long one. Well, I think that just wiped that away. Yep. <laughs> that's going to be fourth and six. Yep. Yeah. Good <laughs> ball. Delay on the offense. You know, I don't know Gary Barnett. Uh, I don't know how good he is with X's and O's, but he has done an outstanding job motivating this uh, this uh, Northwestern team. I think he's smart as a whip because he deals with the human factor uh, exactly, so well. Exactly, exactly. The psychology, the philosophy, and everything that goes into motivating these players. So here's fourth down and substantial now, and you can be sure this Another will be flag. That's one of the linesmen coming in. And Randy Crystal. Want to back up the cat some more. Illegal procedures. So that means now that uh, Burton doesn't have to no. worry about right. pooch kicking. That's right. You can just wail it. Get out of that pooch mode and just <laughs> kick it as far as you can. He can be long. The day we saw him against Penn State, that very cold day in Evanston, he didn't have a particularly good day. I mentioned he's uh, he's kicked more than any other punter in the Big Ten except one. That's a good one. Nice and high. And it is fielded by Parker. He's coming to the 22. And down he goes. So it'll be first down, Southern California, with 34 seconds to play in the first quarter in a 7 7 tie. Of the 1996 Rose Bowl, brought to you by.
Brad Otten, who was shaken in the last possession at the conclusion of it, is back at quarterback. He'll play the first quarter. You should see Kyle Waholt in the second quarter. Keith, I like it. Uh, they, you get two good quarterbacks. So why not play them both? I think the only people that don't like it are the quarterbacks that are involved. Obviously, they'd like to get more practice time and more playing time. This is Delon Washington. And tailback, a couple of yards on the carry. He's a sophomore out of Dallas. I think that two quarterback thing is uh, is uh, really helped uh, USC this year. They had some injuries. There's a look at Kyle Waholtz right behind the, the coach there. Uh, but he'll play the second quarter. And uh, look at the graphics. Uh, the, the combination, 61 completion percentage, 20, 23 touchdowns, seven. Their stats individually are almost identical. First quarter is now history in the 82nd Rose Bowl game. We're all even at seven. When the blip has arrived, it's officially a big event. Here we go with the Trojans, second down and eight. The ball on the 23, the pass to the sidelines, incomplete intended for the tight end, Tyler Cashman. Rodney Ray, number 15, defending for Northwestern. Vander Linden, the, the defensive uh, coordinator for Northwestern. Young coach, but so bright. We're very impressed. Uh, we've done, this is the second game of uh, Northwestern that we've done this year. The other was Penn State. Always wants to have something new for the quarterback to think about. Usually a blitz, normally from the weak side. Always give you something new to think about, something to be concerned with. Five out of six on third down conversions. That ball was high, but Otten pulled it in all right. He's standing around a long time, finally gets some room and throws it, and it's good to Johnson. Keyshawn Johnson coming back to the ball to help his quarterback comes up with a big play. Good protection on that. That took a lot of time to, to throw that one. Let's take a look at the first quarter statistics. Uh, one interesting one for USC, the rushing yardage, minus 15 yards. And then look at total yardage, about the same for both teams. Another thing that's a little interesting is Northwestern getting 93 yards of its total yardage on in the air and only 21 yards on the ground. Button back gets it off this time quicker and it is caught and it's good for another first down and going into the crowd is Keyshawn Johnson coming out now long legged thoroughbred here's Lynn Swan well Keith one of the prominent players who isn't on this field is number 51 Pat Fitzgerald who had that broken leg against Iowa I talked to him before the game he says how he gets through this time because he can't play is the fact that he's a junior and he believes he can come back and this team at Northwestern can be back in the Rose Bowl he also told me that he spent a lot of time with Don Holmes getting up there telling him how to play the little things in this ball game Keith and doing a job of it according to his coach they're very proud of the way Holmes has reacted pass is completed again to Keyshawn Johnson there were all kind of purple shirted folk around him but he still made the catch and it'll be a first down at about the 31 yard line of Northwestern six yeah. catches now yeah this is nice Johnson. go ahead and run it now I ask you to stop it in a minute go ahead and run this Johnson's in the slot going down now the quarterback is rolling now stop it right here now see he's covered he's going to work back to the inside watch as he's going to slide back inside look at him work away from the defense quarterback finds him that's a big league move and it's first down at the 31 yard line Otten again throwing Cashman the tight end dropped it right behind him was the linebacker number 52 Tim Scharf for Northwestern though so he had not touched him I think that uh, Cashman could certainly feel it being there and he was kind of wondering which way to go with him and didn't look the ball all the way home we mentioned that uh, <laughs> USC changes quarterbacks at Waho usually plays the second quarter uh, Hasn't come in, huh? well I guess because Otten started this drive in the first quarter to go let him continue at 1357 to go in the first half we've got a timeout even at seven 
a look at John Michaels, number 77. Uh, he's all these offensive linemen, fifth-year seniors, but Michaels never got to play before this year. Was the backup to Tony Baselli last year. Stepped in and made the first team all Pac-10. That's Barnum in motion, the fullback. Wildcats are blitzing. Hutton runs away from it, gets his ball off, and it is incomplete. And Barnum was covered like a blanket over there by William Bennett, so Otten just dumped it into the seats, and you've got a penalty flag on the field. Can be any number of things here. Offside, Northwestern. Tomorrow night on ABC, the new year starts with new episodes of Roseanne. Big subject. <laughs> Big one. Second down and five. The ball is at the 26-yard line. In the second quarter of play, 7-7 the score. John Robinson, second time around at USC, came here first in 76. Yeah. Talk about guys that have done good jobs. Yep. He's really uh, resurrected this program. And here's Dillon Washington. Trying to turn the corner with a speed, and he does get it around the corner, and he may have a first down on that carry. The ground game has been relatively quiet. Chris Martin made the tackle. There's Tournament House, where Jack French and the executive director and the staff of the Tournament of Roses conduct their business, and the hundreds and hundreds of people who are involved with it. It's the old Wrigley home. Mm -hmm. It's a gorgeous place. That area of Pasadena is really pretty. So serene and peaceful. I haven't seen a part of uh, Pasadena that I haven't liked. That's yet. right. It's a nice city. 21-yard line, first down. Got all day. Now throws. Man wide open. Touchdown. Terry Barnum. He got lost in the band. Well, here's Barnum right here as I draw this circle right here. He's going to go down the sideline. The tight end is going to go down the middle, but he loses sight of him. Barnum is going to clear right. Right now, he's going to come open. And the quarterback comes off of him. Then he scrambles a little bit, sees him again. And a nice catch by Barnum. Trojan Band is, is forming down there in that corner. And I think he kind of got lost in all the color. Yeah. He finally found him, and the kick is good. And so with 13.05 to go in the first half, the Trojans go back to the lead 14-7. Go back and take a look at the touchdown what Southern California wanted to do is get the back on the linebacker now they thought if they get the tight end and get this man out of the way then they could get this back on the linebacker now watch as the tight end clears now he got one on one with the linebacker he drops he thinks he's safe but the back continues running down the field and they cleared out good planning and scheming by Southern California off the kickoff coaches. to the goal line for Hutaifa is my defensive uh, linebacker and back and he breaks loose rumbles up the sidelines a terrific return all the way to about the 48 49 yard line I mentioned uh, the defensive backs Keith one of them is not a starter that made all Big Ten is mainly is the guy he comes in on nickel situations he does everything next year he'll be a starter at the corner position but just a tough guy can do a lot of things kind of like that fellow uh, Farley at Nebraska you know what yes, yes. a lot of things all right ball just beyond the 47 yard line for Northwestern as the Wildcats come up with Darnell Autry the single back Team's running game been fairly well contained so far. USC still negative yardage. Has a little quick pass to Green Bates, and Bates will have close to a first down, just short of it on the mark. And put the football down on the Trojan side of the field at about the 43. At time, Schnurr checked off at the line of scrimmage. Eight Trojans were in the area. Single coverage on the outside. He checked to a quick out. Hit his main man Bates. And uh, picked up a first down. Oh, close to it. Nine yards. Second one. 
it's a short one too so they might want to do something fancy here who knows they got double wide bottom of the picture nope give it to Darnell Autry and the big sophomore will hammer it down the middle of the field on a first down at the 32 of Southern California. Jesse Davis made the tackle. I love watching this. Love watching this kid run. Watch straight blocking. No lineman will pull. Just straight blocking. There's a little slip block there. The center's going to come around and pick up Tyeska, 34, the linebacker. But watch as Autry starts wide, starts wide. It's called a stretch play. Everybody stretches, gets their man. And if he sees any creases, goes right up through, and he does a very good job of it. First down on the 32, here he comes again, and this time the Trojans handle him pretty well, pick up a couple of yards on the play. It's Eric Heron getting his name called for the first down, a first time today. Former Marine. Ex-Marine uh, was in the Gulf War, he's a Gulf War vet. Oldest guy on the team at 26 years old. Okay. And the captain. He got one yard on the carry, if, if that much. But that's what he's done so far today, and that's far below his norm. That's Hartle in motion. Here comes Autry again, looking at the end, going all the way outside. Once he gets into the open, he's a lot faster than you might Just judge. Love to see him run, you know, Keith, because you say you, you'll see the hole developing, and you'll say, "Oh, go outside, go outside." A lot of a lot of guys can't get there. But because of his patience and his good footwork and his vision, now, he needs to come out here. There's some blocks out here. Now, if he could just get around this guy, that's night number nine. He's got deceptive speed and very fluid moves. I, I really like this young man. Change for the first down, and it is. First down for Northwestern. The ball at the Southern California 22-yard line. Gary Barnett sometimes wears the headset, but most of the time he's walking and listening and watching. Thinking ahead. And letting his coaches coach. That's a good point. John Robinson, same way, very seldom wears a headset. Here's Autry. This time the Trojans jump right at the line of scrimmage. Defensive surge led by Daryl Russell, that big 320-pound sophomore. Stuart Gage, when he's in at nose tackle, he's 320. Matt That's Kennelly, 285. They, they're bulky up there. Russell started last year as a true freshman. In fact, started six games. And um, his mom is not very big, and his daddy's not very big. But <laughs> oh, Daryl, 6'4", 320. And I don't know, somewhere in between. <laughs> Maybe Grandpa was a big. Player. Yeah, I guess. There's uh, Stuart Gage. Stuart Gage, yep. yeah. It's second down and about 11. And Schnur back. Looking around. People in his face, he throws it in the crowd out of bounds. That's why he has only five interceptions. Don't take a chance. Don't force it. We'd like to welcome two new affiliates that have joined our ABC television network this morning on this New Year's Day of 1996. They are WGNO TV, ABC 26 in New Orleans, and WPGA TV Channel 58 in Macon, Georgia. We're very happy to have you with us, and we hope the new year is a good one for all of us. Disquieting thing that I could pass on there was a 3.3 earthquake in Northwoods this morning. Oh, that's well. <laughs> After shock. Third down and 11. That's the, that's the philosophy of Northwestern. Third and 11. We want to make sure we don't turn the ball over, do something safe. At least we'll get a three-point uh, attempt out of this situation. But uh, they've been doing that all year and winning. Bates was at quarterback on that play. Dwayne Bates. He was. Yep. Oh, oh, he's... He's... Uh, he's uh, He's, yeah, well, he was a very good quarterback. He's a high school quarterback. Recruited his Goins for the field goal. It's a plenty of leg on it, but he missed it. 37 yards, long and high, but not straight enough. And it remains 14 to 7 USC. 
Let's look at the Magnum Power Sales event one word at a time. Tailback, and he gets the ball up across the 25-yard line. Ballon Sissy there is a senior, one of the leaders on this ball club. It was all Big Ten, second team All-American. He's a finalist for the Groza Award, and this is one of the reasons right here Northwestern is where they are. They've got good special teams, a good place kicker, a good punter, good defense, and good running game. And Valen Sissy, uh, you can see right there. He's How many good. times do you see a place kicker firing up the team? <laughs> He's very popular with his teammates. This is Washington taken down right at the line of scrimmage. I mean, no messing around with that. Big old Don Holmes, a sophomore out of South Holland, Illinois, just decked him. Well, Gary Barnett was telling us that before the season in spring practice, Holmes 53 and uh, Pat Fitzgerald, the uh, defensive player of the year, as it turns out in college, were very close. And it was, uh, Holmes was a little bit more athletically gifted and Fitzgerald uh, seemed to beat him out a little bit. And then once he got the position, just kind of grew in it. But uh, Fitzgerald came from out of nowhere, but Holmes will be playing next year. Buttons pass down the middle, reaching behind, making the catch, Keyshawn Johnson. That's the first down. And here comes the blitz, the purple blitz from the outside. 33 is uh, Collier, the strong safety, and he gets hit by, uh, that's uh, Holmes inside. Now, we have not seen Warholz yet in the ball game, so the two-quarterback system as such has not been evident today. Button has gone all the way. And uh, talking to JR uh, yesterday, he didn't give us any indication it would be any different than it had been throughout the season. He also denied he was going to come pass another shotgun. <laughs> Hutton's pass again, hooked to the left side. Tyler Cashman makes a very good catch. He's a yard short of a first down. John knows you pretty well. He probably knows who he can trust and who he can't. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a look at Kyle. Got his helmet on though. Before he just he didn't have his helmet on. Looks like he might get ready for a little action. Ball is up at the 46-yard line. We're at second down and about two. The Trojans they lead in the ball game, 14 to seven, with 7:20 to play in the first half. Passing USC 214 yards, running minus four. And that man's coaching this team. I mean, ten years ago, you never thought of that. Uh -uh. Keyshawn Johnson is the man in motion. Turns back into the middle of the field and makes the catch, and has a first down for Southern California at the Northwestern 32-yard line. That's what makes him so tough. Against the zone, he just turned right back into the crease, and he's a big target, and he's gone. Eight catches for 124 yards. There he is right here, Keith. He's trailing. Now watch as the blitz is going to come. It's can the blitz get there before you get the ball off? Double double move inside. One receiver, the tight end came in. That's a trail move, very tough to cover. You know, I think when John went to the NFL for several years and came out, I think he started throwing the ball a lot more he in did. college when he got back. Here's Washington. Uh -oh. They pursue well, and the man who ran him down and made the tackle it looked like it might have been Mike Warren. Tough golf course. Tough golf course. You can handle it, though. Long. Second down and eight. Martin looking around. They got a hold of him, but he gets the ball away. And the pass is completed to his tailback, Washington. And it's another first down. And let's check in with Lynn Swan. Well, Keith, if you're wondering why Warholtz hasn't been in, and I know you are because you've been talking about it, I've been talking to personnel on the Trojan sideline. John Robinson told both quarterbacks if one or the other guy got hot, he was not going to guarantee that the other man would cut him, come into the ballgame. So obviously, it's a hot arm of Otten that's keeping him in the ballgame and Warholtz on the bench. Good point, Lenny. He's 18 to 25, 248 yards, and a touchdown. And he's got him first down and 10 at the Northwestern 18 yard line and the Trojans have so far pretty well owned the second quarter pressure coming from behind it's Ismaili and he takes him down on the sack that's three sacks of Otten and Ismaili has done this all year long Keith 
If there's been one guy that's been a thorn in everybody's side, it's Ismaili, number three. Watch as he comes off the corner. We mentioned that Vander Linden likes to come from the weak side. This is the sixth sack of the year for Ismaili. He's a defensive back. He doesn't start, but he made all Big Ten second team, and he is quite a fixture in that secondary. That's why that left tackle's got to be a dominant well, player. Yeah, exactly, but most of the time, he's going up against a, a halfback. Yeah, halfback. Blind side is the vulnerable side for the quarterback. He's caused caused a lot of things to happen this year. 4.46 to go in the first half. Time out. To do TCMP audits. We're thinking ahead. 17 after the sack. And as you saw, that sun shining over the top of the press box is going to be right in the eyes of any wide receiver that goes to the corner and looks back. Now look at the shadows, the long shadows. And they'll run it with Washington. And it's a big one down to the 11 yard line. And Keyshawn Johnson is the man that opened the door. Nice call, Mike Riley, offensive coordinator. Predominantly been throwing the football. Now you get it second and 17. Let's see what Keshawn Johnson does when he's not out on a pass. Oh, not bad. Gets a big piece of a guy with a high number on there, huh? Defensive end. It's Giametti. That's, uh, that's a good, uh, good Mike, one, but Washington. Mike Riley right there calling the plays. Third down and two. That's Barnum in motion. Pitch that ball to Washington. A lot of folks over there wearing purple and no place to go. There's a loss on the play. Danny Sutter, number 50, was the man who was over there. And ironically, Danny Sutter and one of the Iowa tackles were the people who fell on the leg of Pat Fitzgerald and broke it in the Iowa game. Sutter's got a brother that uh, plays a little football with the Cleveland Browns. Or yeah, I don't know if Sutter family has. Uh, I don't know if we can call them Cleveland Browns, but uh, <laughs> I don't know what they are. Adam Homeless, Adam Abrams, <laughs> for the field goal try of 30 yards. He got it. So at 3.29 to go in the first half, the Trojans now lead by 10. AT&T introduced him at about the 26-yard line, and we go off to visit with John Saunders. All right, Keith, thanks a lot. Joined by Todd Blackledge at halftime. We'll have all the day's scores and highlights. Right now, you're impressed with the quarterback at USC. Yeah, I saw USC three times this year, and Brad Otten's arm is really live today. He's thrown the football very well. As a result, USC has the lead. We'll see you at halftime right now. Let's go back to Keith. All right, John, happy new year, y'all. Time of possession, big in favor of uh, the Trojans. 26-yard line for the Wildcats. They've been traveling a lot for the pass themselves, and they're looking to do it again as the ball is thrown to the sidelines, and it is incomplete. Brian Musso could not reel in the low pass. And again, Schner is on the ground, but not with a lot of force. They really haven't abused him so far. They really haven't gone after him so far. He's 7 out of 14 for 102 yards. I think they're, they'd much rather contain uh, Darnell Autry and uh, let Schnur wander around. I, I, you're exactly right, Keith. The whole emphasis is stop the run, force Schnur to beat you with passes, and uh, Keith Burns, the defensive coordinator, has set that game plan up uh, beautifully. Second down and 10 for the Wildcats, 17 to 7. USC has the lead, 3.15 to play in the first half. Schnur's pass thrown right to the numbers of Darnell Autry swinging out of the backfield. And he's just over the 30. That's a pickup of about five yards. Snur was not a highly recruited uh, quarterback. School in the St. Louis area. He's a junior, a redshirt junior. He'll be back, but uh, his his strengths are his uh, good decision making, his, his intelligence, his leadership, and he's very competitive and doesn't turn the ball over. Fewest interceptions in the Big Ten uh, has to been thrown by Steve Schnur. That ball is thrown into the hands of Brian Musso. And he fumbles as he goes down. It's picked up by the Trojans. And on the way is Dalen McCutcheon. And 
it's touchdown for the freshman. Musso is going to come from the right side of the screen. And if there's one thing that uh, Northwestern has lived by all year, it's the turnovers in their favor. This ball comes out. It was hard to tell from that shot whether he was on the ground or not. But McCutcheon has the speed to take it in. He was a running back in high school and a very good one. Son of Lawrence McCutcheon. Great pro player. Adam Abrams in for the extra point try. And it's good. So an electrifying play, a turnaround in the ball game as the lead now goes to 24 to 7. So the old Rose Bowl is still humming over what just happened. Another look at it. Here's another look at that last play. Good throw and catch. Now the question is, is his knee down before the ball is loose? There's an official standing there looking right at it. Here comes Micah Phillips. That's Sammy Knight pursuing. That's close. very close. It's yeah. very close. That McCutcheon's very number close. one. He scoops it up and goes down the sidelines. The point is, yeah. The point is that uh, Northwestern has only given the ball away on turnovers 12 times offensively. They've only given it up 12 times in 11 games. This is Adrian Autry. He finds some room. And he's out to the 35-yard line. So the Wildcats kind of shocked, I'm sure, by what just happened when it appeared Musso had a first down and a big gain. And suddenly, the ball is loose and going the other way. Northwestern is not a team that uh, is, a, is very good at coming from behind. They've only been behind twice this year. At halftime, they, were, they trailed Illinois and they trailed Iowa. But they're a more of a ball control possession type of offense. And they usually need help from their offense getting turnovers. Dave Beasley now has been very quiet in the ball game. He is split wide to the bottom of the picture. And now timeout is called and charged to Southern California. With two minutes and 50 seconds remaining to play in the first half. 24 to 7 is your score, Trojans. He, here's Swanee. Well, Keith, you know, a lot of folks talk about Northwestern and whether or not this team is for real or not. And when I've talked to a number of people on how you build a program from the ground up, and there are about five things they told me that are very key and which makes Northwestern a legitimate program. Number one is recruiting the talent, having the people in place, training and weight room, building the people in that program, a good worth ethic and discipline, having a system that works for the team, and then you wrap it up with a winning attitude. And there are a lot of other little details that go in there, but those are the components that Gary Bennett has been able to, Barnett, Barnett excuse me, has been able to bring to Northwestern. That's why I think they're not just a team for 1995, but they're going to be a good solid team as long as he stays there and keeps it going. Well, they got a whole lot of folks coming back next year. They do. In fact, nine of the 11 starters on offense are back, and the key ones are back, and that is Autry and Schnur and Bates, the wide receiver. They only lose uh, the center and right guard. But, you know, something else, Keith, uh, what Lenny was saying is intelligence. I think it's much easier to coach the players at a Northwestern or a Stanford the, the, where it's tougher to get in uh, than some of the other guys around. They have a little bit more talent, but uh, do it their way and not yours. Nothing on that play. It's going to go down right at the line of scrimmage, about the 35 yard line. If Yanni gets the call, Israel If Yanni making his uh, first clear solo of the day on Darnell Autry. They've handled Darnell pretty well in this first half. Give him one yard on that carry. Here comes the pressure again. This pass is away. Complete. To Autry as Schnur just stood up, scanned the field, and threw it right to him, and he was all alone. He's about a yard short of his first down, where it'll be third down for Northwestern and about two. Well, it's spotted at the 42 yard line. So Hartle comes back onto the field, and uh, the two coaches, uh, Gary Barnett, is on the shadow side 
And USC is on the sunny side as the shadows now begin to reach well across the field. You can see that. This is Autry looking in the middle. And so far, the Trojan tacklers have done a pretty good job of what John Robinson was talking about to make sure you wrap it. Don't let him have any room at all because he'll just run over you if you don't wrap him up. Good point, Keith. It's fourth and one, or and it uh, looks like Barnett's going to punt it away. But uh, one of the things about Autry is not easy to bring him down. Usually, he'll break a lot of tackles over the course of a ball game. Well, I think Gary Barnett has given football a homily, but when he said right, uh, some time back, he says, if you don't make mistakes, give the ball away, you only have to play one team. Yeah, just beat one team, not two. Don't That's beat right. yourself. That's right. And they've turned it over here. It's Burton taking all day because there was no pressure on him. Pondering, well, if they're not going to come, I might run. But finally, they closed that door, and he did Larry kick Parker, it, and it's returned by Larry Parker for about four yards, and the Trojans will have it first down at the 27-yard line. A minute and 25 seconds to go in the first half. Ball returned to the 27-yard line of USC. Eric Collier makes the stop. Eight yards on the return. I would think that you'll find uh, both these teams uh, highly regarded going into the next football season. I think another team that's going to be you're going to find very high in uh, your national polls uh, or expectations next year will be VT? Tennessee. How about Virginia Tech? In Virginia, well, yeah, why not? Underneath the pass complete to Barnum, he's decked on the 31-yard line by Jeff Shine, a senior linebacker from Glencoe, Illinois. 31-yard line. But it was interesting the attitude uh, over the weekend and going into this ball game by the Trojans because they're the home team and they truly genuinely felt like they had been left out of the party. Well, they're not the home team officially, but as they live here. Yes, <laughs> they practiced at their own facility. Um, yeah, they didn't. Uh, they didn't have to get on an airplane and go anywhere. It's also interesting, you know, in bringing up the question of economics because the Wildcats had to come out here for. Uh, an additional time because uh, Northwestern is on the uh, quarter system and the campus was literally shut down. And they don't have an in indoor practice and facility anyway. They don't anyway. have an indoor facility, so they would have had to live in a hotel if they'd have stayed at home. Yeah. So it was just about a wash and having them come out here where they had the good weather and got in some good work. The only problem with that is you're out here for two weeks and that changes up your whole system. You're staying in a hotel room and uh, there's a turnover. Northwestern got it. So the Wildcats get a break. And the purple and white side of the stadium stands and cheers. Lavelle Woods popped it up. Is Maley number three is near this. Let's take a look. They've done this all year long. 32 takeaways by this purple defense. That's 52 in there pulling at the ball. That's sharp. And his Maley is on it. And it's first down Northwestern at the Southern California 34-yard line. 12 seconds remaining to play in the first half. Stir sets him up. He's got four wideouts. He gets it away down the middle. It is caught by Bates. Caught Big by play. Bates down at the 12-yard line, and timeout is called. Wildcats will have two left. It's a nice play by Schnur and a good call by Greg Meyer. You don't have much time left. Now the decision is, do you kick the field goal with a field goal kicker? You, you, you're you're All-American. Your second team All-American is hurt and out of the ball game. Do you go with your backup who's already missed a field goal or do you throw one in the end zone? You got five seconds. Throw it in. If you got five seconds. If you run a play, you're not going to have time to run it. He told play. us before the Penn State game that he felt the kind of people he had playing on his football team were risk takers. And they'll take a chance. But he's got his kicking team coming out. So they'll take risk. He won't take chances. Don't That's take right. chances. Yeah. That's right. Take a risk, but don't take a chance. Right. Difference. And the place kicker is out there. I think the whole key here, uh, Keith, is momentum. 
Uh, that, well, yeah, that, they that, got the ball too. Well, the, I mean the fu the uh, the fumble that was returned by USC for a touchdown took the momentum away. If they can get back on the uh, on, on the board with a field goal here, get a little bit momentum going into halftime. And then they get the ball first to start the second half. Yeah. Makes it carry over. Or the potential for carry over. So here's Brian Goins. He's in there. This is from 40 yards. No, this is from uh, put it on the 19 yards. So it'll be 29 yards. And it's 10 points now for Northwestern as we come down to two seconds remaining. He's a pretty steady kicker, that youngster. That is his first field goal, however, inside 40 yards. Remember, he had to step in and as a redshirt freshman and fill the gap when Sam Valencisi had done all of the kicking. And he's picked up the pieces, and Sam's his biggest cheerleader. So it's 24 to 10 as we head for the clubhouse. And as Bob said, right now, Old Mo might be wearing a purple shirt again. Coming up at halftime, John Saunders and Todd Blackledge will run over the scoreboard for you. And we'll also show you the USC and Northwestern marching bands. We haven't seen the attendance number yet, but I don't see a whole lot of empty seats. The press box side of the stadium is basically purple and white. I think that's one of the great things about this game, Keith, the last five years that the, the teams that have come have been new teams. Yep. Five different teams have been from the Big Ten in the last in, in the 90s and, and from the Pac-10. Oregon here was a couple years ago. Penn State was here last year. Just uh, really some fresh, I mean, new people, freshness out here. Just brings a vitality. Oh, and they, and they stay to the end. Uh, they don't leave early. A little pop up. And it is fielded by the Trojans, and you got a penalty flag. Ryan Tayeska, a linebacker, caught the ball, and the clock didn't start until the ball had come down and was touched, and that leaves one second on the clock. And now there's a penalty flag to be resolved here, and it may well be against the Wildcats. It is. You can call for a fair catch on a kickoff, you know. I don't know that Tayeska did. I didn't see him do it. But there was Northwestern people all around him when he was trying to catch the ball. Here's an opportunity to catch with contact. That's a 15 yard penalty. And that is the call. It's a 15 yard penalty. Big penalty. Yeah, and, and you're right, Keith, because it gives him one play to send Kashawn Johnson straight down the field and throw an alley oop in the end zone. The ball is now at the 42-yard line of Northwestern. There's Tyeska, 34. Yeah, he did get his hand up. Yep. 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 You can fair catch it, and that was a very good, quick thinking by him. Good call by the official. Yep. First down, only time for one play. And out of the shotgun, Otten steps up, looking around. Now lets it go high. It's in the end zone. It's beyond the end zone. It's out of the end zone. And the half is over. And you score at halftime. Southern California 24. The Northwestern Wildcats 10. Now we'll join John Saunders and Todd Blackman. All right, Keith, thanks a lot. Todd will join me in just a few moments' time. We'll take a look at the scores and highlights from the four other games being played right after this word and a message from your ABC stations. Sports College Football Halftime Report. Here now, John Saunders. Welcome alongside Todd Blackledge. We'll have the scores and highlights of the other games in just a few moments' time. But right now, more of the Rose Bowl festivities. Let's rejoin our Keith Jackson. Keith. Back at the Rose Bowl at halftime. Let's join the University of Southern. Auburn in a bowl for the first time in a few years because of their probation. Wally Richardson, great day. 20 yards here to Bobby Ingram. 43 to 7 and 43 14 is the final as Joe Paterno now 17 8 and 1 in bowl games. That's a record. Wally Richardson 13 for 24, 217 yards and four touchdowns. Bobby Engram 113 yards receiving. Wally Richardson though short of the Todd Blackledge record at Penn State for most yards passing in a bowl game. Yeah, but John, this is really an important.
important game for Wally Richardson. It was a tough season trying to follow the success of Kerry Collins. He got through it. He had a great game today, and that's a good start for 1996 for him. Yeah, very big win for Penn State. Disappointment for Auburn. Now the Gator Bowl, Syracuse and Clemson. This one on paper looked like it could be a pretty good game, but some trickery here. Donovan McNabb. Yeah, Donovan McNabb, a redshirt freshman quarterback, going to his favorite target, Marvin Harrison, for the touchdown. 56 yards, and Syracuse led 34-0 at that point. 41 to zip is the final, so a pretty good weekend for the Big East. Yeah, they could only fill two bowl slots, but both Virginia Tech and Syracuse with the big wins. And Marvin Harrison, 173 yards, receiving, averaging almost 25 every time he touched it. The Comp USA Florida Citrus Bowl, seen earlier here today on ABC. Ohio State against Tennessee. Peyton Manning goes 47 yards here to Joey Kent. Nice catch to the end zone for the touchdown, and then Todd, a little trouble for the Buckeyes as they try and score. Yeah, a key play on fourth down. Ohio State, not an option team. They tried to fool Tennessee. It backfired, and the game was lost on that play. Yeah, it bounced off Matt Calhoun's helmet as they tried to make the pitch, and Tennessee wins it 20-14. to Eddie George, who won the Heisman Trophy, 25 carries. He did get his 100 yards, but look, he fumbled the ball twice. Graham, 26 carries for 154 yards, so the Buckeyes finished with two consecutive losses on the season. Yeah, a tough way for Eddie George also to finish out his collegiate career. He won the Heisman, but two losses to end it out. All right, right now the Cotton Bowl. Colorado in this one facing Oregon, and Oregon just outmanned in this one. Tony Graziani intercepted by Marcus Washington, and he returns it 95 yards for the touchdown. At that point, Colorado led 13 to 6. But they roll in this one. Number seven knocking off number 12. 38 to 6 was the final. Hessler with two touchdown passes and a touchdown run as well. Oregon with five turnovers. Yeah, Colorado a good football team. And John, Colorado and Tennessee very similar. Two teams that they've got to find a way to beat Nebraska and Florida in their respective conferences. But if they can do that next year, they might contend for the national championship. And you wonder about the Cotton Bowl. The, the stadium was about half empty in this one. And if you don't have a Southwest Conference team, or that's broken up now, but a team from that area, they may struggle. Yeah, that bowl's in, in some trouble right now. Okay, right now, not also a part of the alliance. So stick around. We'll still have more to come from our Rose Bowl festivities at halftime. USC has the lead, 24 to 10. Well, I think I think Northwestern is out of sync. The, the, this is not their style of game. Uh, defensively, they only give up 13 points a game on the average. They've already given up 24. They don't score a lot of points. They they don't know how to come from behind. They have not run the ball well. What they need to do is get back to creating turnovers like their defense did just before halftime. I don't think they can win this game if their defense doesn't help them with some turnovers and get them some good field position. Southern Cal, on the other hand, doing a great job of throwing the ball. They come out and they say, we're not going to run. We've seen something. We're going to throw the football on Northwestern. All right, now Northwestern got the three points to make it 24-10 going into the clubhouse at halftime, though USC did have a shot in the end zone. They threw it out of bounds. But there's a personal foul penalty assessed against Southern California at the close of the half. That's marked off against them to start the second half, so they're going to have the ball first down at the... Uh, at midfield. Give him a little kickstart, uh, but still you have to move it down. Uh, the game is not over by any stretch of the imagination. Northwestern has played too well, and I've got too much confidence in Gary Barnett that he is going to say the right things at halftime to get this team to come out and play well. I don't know if defensively they can slow down the passing game of uh, Southern California. Well, yeah, SC's got to kick it off from the 20s, so that'll see what they can do with that first possession. Yeah. And they're about ready as we check in momentarily with Lynn Swan. Okay, thank you. Uh, when I talked to Gary Barnett, he said he couldn't believe how hot Brad Otten was, and he's finding the third and fourth receiver downfield. He said, I don't believe he can keep it up. But Brad Otten, according to John Robinson, will start the second half, not Waholtz. In addition, Gary Barnett said in the second half, he'll take his offense on the field, and they will go with a no-huddle offense to try and generate some momentum on their side of the field. Keith? All right, Ismaili is back there along with Adrian Autry to receive the kickoff to start the second half. They're standing out on the 15-yard line now, so with any kind of a return, they're going to get somewhere out in the middle of the field for this first snap to start the second half. And they need something good to happen for them early on here because USC did control the ball most of the second quarter. So their running game hasn't done anything today either. Here's a high kick. And it's pretty good when he goes back to the 11-yard line where Ismaili comes back with it, gets 
to the outside, gets to the 35, still going 40, and he's up at about the 43-yard line. So there you have it. Very outstanding. Great individual effort right there. Here's a look at the numbers uh, the first half. Uh, nobody's running the ball very well. Rushing yards, uh, Southern California's not even trying. Northwestern 47. Go down to the uh, third down conversions. USC doing very well. And the points off turnovers, the one turnover that Northwestern made was returned for a touchdown. And just before the half, Northwestern got a field goal after the fumble by USC. Well, they load it up on the right side and give it Autry. Darnell Autry finds the crack and crosses midfield and puts it at the USC 48-yard line, picked up nine yards on the carry before Mark Cusano brings him down. Mark Cusano makes the stop to the Trojans along with We've talked about what Northwestern keep on trucking. Autry rushed 12 times uh, for 43 yards and a touchdown. That's not good enough. And defensively can force turnovers. Well, they got the one late, but they're going to need some more to win this ball game. They came in 10 and 1, ranked number three in the country. Southern California back among the pack, 15-17. Second and one. Autry. First down, USC 41-yard line. No indecision on that carry. Just boom. Take a look at the individual leaders and see how they're doing offensively. Northwestern, Schnur, 11 of 18, 157, no interceptions. Autry with a 43 yards. Bates with five receptions, 88 yards. And uh, Musso, of course, caught two, but he had that one mistake that was returned for a touchdown. Just starting the second half of play, if you're just joining us, 24 to 10. Northwestern first down, USC 41 stir, looks down the middle, throws to Bates, it's incomplete. Didn't have possession as he was tackled by Brian Kelly just as the ball arrived. We're told that Daryl Russell's dad, who is a commander in the Navy, is aboard the USS America out in the Adriatic Sea today and watching. He was a running back at Navy, Naval Academy, back in the 70s. His son is on the field today for USC. There's his son, Daryl. Dad is 5'9", 195 pounds. Mom's 5'8", Daryl's 6'4", and 320. Ball <laughs> goes to Darnell Humphrey. Searches around in the middle, got one yard to the 40, and there's a penalty flag. There was a lot of movement along the front of, uh, on both sides of the ball. Matt makes the stop for the Trojans. It is offside against USC. Defensive man can be penalized even though an offensive man might move after the defender has transgressed under the new rules or under the current rules. Northwestern has had the ball six times. They scored the very first possession in ten plays. The fumble on their fourth possession resulted in a touchdown the other way. They got the field goal after that turnover on their last possession. And it is second down and five as the ball is moved to the USC 36. What Northwestern wants to do is establish the run with Autry to set up the pass. Penalty flags all over the place as Autry may have a free, uh, no, it's uh, Adrian Autry, not Darnell, but Adrian 32 as he runs for the first down and I think you're going to find that SC probably was in the neutral zone for the second successive play. Well, the pass down to the 29 yard or it may be a procedure call. No, it's offside against USC. So it's, they've made two mistakes in a row and uh, the carry was better than the penalty so they should take the carry. It'll be first down Northwestern at the Southern California 29. Darnell Autry out is back. Adrian Autry goes out. First attempt for Northwestern at the USC 29 yard line. First drive of the third quarter. Very important, especially when you're down like Northwestern is and you've got good field position on this drive. Trojan defense rising up for this one. Number 92, Matt Kennelly. Junior out of Laguna Hills, California. Got the penetration and got a piece of Autry to take him down. Drop back at the 92 is Kennelly. Watch him as he just runs over one of the offensive linemen. Nice play by Matt Kennelly, an academic All-American, three-year starter. 
Nice the job. Floor. He'll be very prominent game. next year. Both these teams got a lot of folks coming back. Second down and 14. A snur throws that little shovel pass to Darnell Autry, and he gets outside. Got it around the corner before Scott Fields finally got over there and got a piece of him. Well, he picked up on the play of about seven. Fields is an interesting story, Keith. He was an outstanding high school running back, and of course he had visions of grandeur coming to uh, University of Southern California. Heisman, uh, he wanted to win that. Ended up uh, being uh, shifted from tailback to free safety, and now he's up to linebacker. He's only 200 pounds, but he's playing, and he's the second leading tackler on that Trojan defense. He played a half a dozen positions. Yeah, he's been all over. <laughs> yeah. Third and seven for the Goal Cats. Pass down the middle is complete to Musso. This time, Bryant puts it away and takes it inside the 10, where it's first and goal, Northwestern. Just do what you can. Northwestern just setting up. Schnurr not turning it over. Little crossing route. This is probably the outlet. He looked downfield. Nothing was there. And Musso beat his man and picked up a first down. It'll be first and goal from the nine for Northwestern. The tight end, Drexler, 6'6", 258-pounder. Bates comes to the bottom of the picture. Darnell Autry in the backfield has the ball. Hit behind the line of scrimmage and taken down at the 12. It's Daryl Russell getting the penetration for the tackle. Daryl Russell makes the stop for USC. It's a nice play by Russell. He just uh, didn't. That was a little misdirection play, and he just got in there and said nothing, nothing doing this time. 11 and a half minutes to go, third quarter. Second down and 12 from the 12. You know Gary Barnett would love to have a touchdown here. Sturt rolling it out. Throws down the middle. Should have been picked off. Yeah, he was lucky he'd get that one back, and he knows it. It was intended for Shane Graham. Number 23 went up there and got his hands on it, Jesse Davis. And he went right on through his hand. Well, Jesse Davis. Here's Davis here as he's going to try to hit a receiver coming into this area. As he rolls out, watch Davis, the defensive back. He sees him rolling. Nice slides. He slides. He didn't see Davis. There was a man in between he and Davis. Davis came into this ball game with six turnovers on the year, four interceptions, and two fumble recoveries. He missed that one, though. Third and 12. From the 12, the ball is knocked down at the goal line by number 27, Michael Phillips. Michael Phillips is sending on the pass play for you. Same thing. That ball could have been. Could have been picked off too. Watch, watch as Schnur is going to look to our left. Watch him looking to the left. Now that draws the safety over. He's looking there the whole time. The safety coming from our right side, 27. That's Michael Phillips. He saw him looking that way the whole time, and when he started to throw, he went after the ball. Should have picked it off. Brian Goins in for a field goal try from the 18. A 28-yard try is good. So the Trojans sort of win that scuffle as they hold them to three, and it's now 24-13. Pictures coming out of the Goodyear Blimp Eagle and providing aerial pictures. 1996 is the 71st consecutive year that a Goodyear Blimp has been flying over major sporting events. 71 years. Hi, guys. Hey, Happy guys. New Year to you. Dick and Glenn. All right, here's the kickoff by the Wildcats. They go onside. They got it. They got it at the 47-yard line. Josh Barnes covers it. And it's pickup time. Got to get what? The coach of the year, Gary Barnett. He's, he's, he's trying to fire his troops up a little bit. Five yards, 10 yards, you can have it now. Couldn't have been done much better, and 
The Trojans were not ready for it at all. No, they were not in any sense ready for it. Nice kick, too. Nice kick by Goins. You couldn't execute it any better. The little things add to a large sum sometimes. This is Autry. And he'll get it across midfield to the USC 49. For a pickup of about three. Well, that was a big defensive stand for the Trojans, only holding the, the Wildcats to three points. But you come right back, you get, a, you get an onside kick, and now you can take it down for more. Just an outstanding uh, call and execution. Second down and seven. He sees the crack. He is really threw it in a hurry. And it's a first down at the Southern California 39. Take a look. Starts to go wide. He starts outside. The linebacker comes outside. That's Cusano, number four. When he started outside, Cusano says, I'm going outside. And he stopped and went back inside. 18 yes. carries, 66 yards, and a touchdown. For Darnell Autry today, so far. He may be just warming up. Stairs pass completed to the tight end, Drexler. And Drexler will have it inside the 25, and it's another Northwestern first down. And to set up Autry, set up the running game, to establish the running game to set up the passing, and that's what they're doing. 23 yard line. That's only the the ninth pass this year that Drexler, the tight end, has caught. He figured the house, 6'6", 258. Well, you know why he's in there. Well, of course. It's another tackle. <laughs> buck, buck, buck. 23-yard line. Might be time for Bates. He's got single coverage on the outside. Up, hand it away to Matt Hartle, the fullback. And a little piece of sugar for the big old blocking back. <laughs> He'll take it down to the 19. And there's one of the Wildcats shaking up on the play. That's Ryan Padgett. Ryan Padgett. On the field. Shaking up. He can ill afford to lose Ryan. He was um, all Big Ten this year. Timeout for Mr. Padgett. Look at the entry. Ryan Padgett right here in the purple. Left uh, ankle or left knee is going to uh, collapse under him as the running back and the, uh, the tackler. They all just kind of whiplash behind him. He's a senior. As I mentioned, he has uh, made the All-Big Ten team. Number 72, Peterson, is in for him. They took him right to the clubhouse, so I don't think we'll see Padgett anymore. He's from Bellevue, Washington, too. He's, uh, there he goes. Uh, he's not putting any weight. That's uh, this is his last game uh, at the university, so his career as a Wildcat is finished. Here comes Autry into the crowd, and we'll pick up a couple of yards on the play. And let's check in with Swanee. Well, Keith, when he came off the field, they told me it was his left ankle that was the problem. And the Rose Bowl doesn't have X-ray equipment, but Northwestern brought in a low-grade. Fluoroscope. Fluoroscope, excuse me. Thanks, Keith. Fluoroscope. <laughs> and they brought it in to check out hands and anything below the elbow and ankles in case something happens. So they're going to take him in, get the x-ray, and if I get the information, I'll give you the update. Uh, I think we were back there for the Penn State game that his right ankle was Yeah, how do you know all that race. medical stuff anyway? You're, you're looking into this stuff with your knees. I read a lot. Yeah, right. I've had my own. I'm, yes. <laughs> I've been there, done that. Yeah. Ball is pitched out to the left side, and uh, Archery makes a diving try, doesn't come up with it, and there's a penalty flag on the field. And it's thrown back down there in the secondary. So it might well be again the Trojans. Defensive holding had to be a first down. An automatic first down. Did you know that it has not rained on a Rose Bowl football game since 1955? Well, I know I played here in 67 with the Boilermakers and it didn't rain. I'll tell you, it is something special. Musso in the slot, number 22. Let's check this out. 
Yeah, right there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good call by the back judge. He's in the middle of the uh, field, way in the back, and he looks at the tight end or the slot. Snur saw it. He jumped it up and down. Well, he Where's wanted to it? throw him the ball, and he couldn't get his release. Yep. So the Trojans make a big mistake. They give Northwestern the ball. First and goal at the nine. Sammy Knight, he was the guilty party. This, this Trojan defense is second in the nation coming in with fewest touchdown passes allowed. They've only allowed six. The team that has allowed the fewest is Northwestern. They've only allowed five. So tough to throw the ball in the end zone with these two teams. They stopped them the last time. They were down on the nine, first and goal. This time they give it to Darnell Autry, and he's working down the corner. Touchdown! Boy, there's some good blocking on that right side to give him that little alley down the sidelines. Keith, the thing I like is the patience. Watch him. He lets his guys do the work. Nothing there, nothing there. Okay, now Hartle, a great block by his fullback, 46. A lot of backs would have just run up the back and tried to push the pile. He waited, he waited. Things developed for him, and in he went. Going for two. When do you go for two? When to go for two? It's 24 to 19. They're down by five. Trying to make it two, so you'll only be down by three, which is a field goal on us. And Leary checks into the backfield. That means they're going to throw this thing. There's pass thrown away. Missed it. He missed him. He had Beasley. I think he had Beasley, and he just didn't hit him. And so the score remains 24 to 19 SC. SC has had one, and Northwestern the rest. Remember just a few plays ago when the score was 24 to 7? Yep. Northwestern has scored 12 straight points. It is taken by Chris Miller. And he is level by Barry Gardner. Coming up next on ABC, Delon Washington is now the tailback. And the Trojans have got to go into the bag now and try to find a jump start because Northwestern has just been dominant here in the third quarter. USC seeing the ball for the first time in the third quarter. And we have 8-10 to play in the period. Ball is to Tyler Cashman, the tight end, and he's got about five yards. Uh, same M.O. Uh, they coming out throwing. For um, USC, we said uh, Rosie Day for one of the quarterbacks. Otten's been the guy. 252 yards and a touchdown. And defensively stopped the run. Well, they've done that pretty well, especially in the first half. These are updated. Now it's four points, four yards per carry. But Auden is still in there. Hot hands. He stay with him. Johnson is out here. He's got the ball. Got a block from Parker. And Johnson, once he got past that first man, Rodney Ray, he was on his way. And he was saved by Eric Collier, the strong safety. Well, this kid is just so good, Keith. He is tall, 6'4", uh, over 200 pounds. He can run after he catches the ball. He can jump. Good leaper. I really like this kid. You know, he's uh, he was the Pac-10 Offensive Player of the Year, first team All-American, 90 catches this year during the season. First down, USC at their own 45. Run! Run it. Well, they haven't done much on the ground all day as Delon Washington carries it. We've got a penalty flag. Right, right along the line of scrimmage. That big old John Michaels at number 77 standing there listening. Holding Trojans. So they're making some big mistakes. In the meantime, we've got an injured Wildcat. Down on the field, I can't see the number. Let's take a look at the uh, Trojans and see how their uh, possessions in the first half uh, went they had the ball six times they scored on their first and third possession uh, they fumbled uh, later on but they also got a defensive score when Dale and McCutcheon picked up that fumble and ran it in for a touchdown 
We'll be back in just a moment. He's all ready. He's yeah. ready to go. That's Cashman, the tight end in motion, and Otten back. And his delivery is on the money. It goes to Johnny McWilliams, who broke from the tight end position while uh, Cashman was in what they call the H-back position. And at 7-10 to go in the third quarter, it's 24-19, USC leading Northwestern. And now the Trojans are looking at second down and 10. They gain 10 on that play. First and 21, they just, they're throwing the ball, Keith. I didn't, they're not trying to run it at all, and I think their attitude is throw deep, we can stretch the zones, and then come back underneath. Northwestern defensively, second half, plan more blitzing to put more pressure on Otten. They were surprised he played as well as he did. Here it comes. Here it comes. He just didn't quite get back to the line of scrimmage. He lost about a yard on the play, and it says Maley back in the ball game and head hunting again with Danny Sutter, the uh, linebacker. I don't know who they're going to give the sack to, but uh, his Maley is a disruptor. Franny Ganner, the offensive coordinator, Penn State, calls this defense in the secondary uh, like a bunch of piranhas. When they start coming after you, they come from everywhere. That's the seventh sack on the year for that defensive back right there. He also has three fumble recoveries and two forced fumbles. Ball is on the 44-yard line. It is third down, 11. That's Johnson in motion. He's got it. He's gone. Goodbye. Touchdown, Trojan. Once he broke past the first contact, there was nobody home, nothing but taillights and a TD. Well, he's a man among boys. There you go. Ismaili number three is on him. Nice move. Taillights in the mirror. Is that what you said? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> There's no question that this man is the best player on this field today, and he is like a man among boys. That's what, 10 catches for him? Yep, for 199 yards, which is a Rose Bowl record, and Adam Abram converts to the extra point. And at 6.08 to play in the third quarter, it is now 31, USC and 19, Northwestern. On Saturday, January, th touchdown didn't hurt. What do you think Era's feeling right now? Era? Era. Hates that white horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's from his days at wore uh, him at, out. At Notre Dame. That not, big uh, turnaround game. Yeah, uh, that one game. Uh huh. The ball goes to Ismaili, a yard deep in the end zone. He's tough. He's across the 25 to the 26. Let's go back and take a look from behind the offense on that touchdown. In motion is Johnson. His melee number three is in the fallen. Blitz, six guys are coming, so man, everybody is man covered in the uh, secondary. It's the same play they ran a little bit earlier. Both guys coming back to the inside. His melee dove for the ball and didn't make it. Brad Otten having a big first half, getting the ball where it needs to be. I'd throw as many as I could, though, to my man number three, Keyshawn. On the 26 now, first down for the Wildcats. Darnell Autry is the deep back. That's Beasley in motion. And Schnurr gives it. No, he kept it. He wants to go big with it. Down the middle of the field for Queen Bates, and he caught it! What a great catch by Bates. He had two Trojans hanging all over him. They lost contact with him, lost sight of the ball, and he made a great play. It's a good call, Keith. And you know what? There's a penalty flag back where he threw the ball, so it may be a late hit on the quarterback because they're going to pick up that flag and bring it all the way upfield, so that's bad news for USC personal foul. 
Take a look from the goalpost cam from behind. Little fake and a fake reverse. Now that's allowing the, the receiver to get down there. But look, good coverage, double coverage. But Bates just wants it more than those two backs. It's supposed to come off like it's a reverse or a run and then take off running. But Davis is 23 and Kelly 42. They were there, but Bates made the play. Yeah, but you add on the personal foul from the 28-yard line where Bates was put down and Northwestern owns the football. First down at the USC 13-yard line. If Northwestern goes in, that just negates the Johnson touchdown that That's was right. just scored on the long pass. That's right. If you don't make mistakes and give the ball away, and certainly personal fouls have to be considered mistakes. First down from the 13 for the Wildcats. And it's Autry to the 10. Down to the USC 10-yard line. I'd like to call the Barnett made just a little bit earlier, Keith. Uh, that onside kick was a huge call because if it didn't work and Southern California took the ball the other way, the game could have been over. But uh, he's made a lot of calls this year, and most of them have been right. The consensus national coach of the year. Second down, seven. Autry. Oh, he's good on that cutback. He's going to be at about the seven-yard line. He goes just inside the four. He, they get a first down. So it's the stretch play. It's just like uh, everybody blocking man on man and just run to the sideline with your men. They get the big fullback back in there. Uh, Mike McGrew to team up with Hartle. We're looking at third down and four. And it's a short four. Short four. Could run our pass this time. If Hartle's on this side. The other guy's coming over here, too. So both fullbacks are out there in front of Archery. Here he goes. Back to the goal line. First and goal. They don't give him the six. Well, the minute you saw McGrew still go in motion, that put two fullbacks in front of Autry. And, and Hartle, boom. Hartle uh, it was the one that really got a key block. As you see, the fullback is already gone, but watch 46. You're going to see maybe a little bit of him. He really seals to the inside. Now we're going to miss him. But that's, uh, that's a nice run. Both fullbacks, give your to your best back, stretch him wide, an offensive line of Janice and Johnson, Chabot, Cardos, and Peterson doing a nice job. That's a good offensive line, I think. It's a quarterback sneak. Steve Schnur. And no striped shirt arms have reached toward the heavens yet. As they're teetering near Hallelujah Land down there for the Wildcats. <laughs> no celebrating yet. Teetering towards Hallelujah Land. Huh? They don't give it to him. <laughs> One. It'll be second down. There's a reflection of a little suffering going on on the two sidelines. Robbie said the other day, 21 teams, 11 in the Big Ten and 10 in the Pac-10 started out. Two are left and one's going to be standing after today. There goes quarterback Steak. This time he's got his touchdown. here why uh, Northwestern is 10 and 1 why they're ranked third in the nation they're a plucky lot yeah I, they just don't give up and it's because of that man right there Gary Barnett the extra point try for Brian Gowans Goins I think he likes it pronounced Paul Burton the punter holds it uh, the hold is good the kick is true and at 2 minutes and 58 seconds to play last four Northwest possessions the Wildcats have gone field goal field goal touchdown touchdown and it's 31 to 26.
What a mess there, huh? Let's go back and take a look. This is a key play in the second half that really got Northwestern started, and it had it not worked, if Southern California had recovered, they had a short field going the other way, but uh, this is the thing that got them started. Again, they're back within five points, and all they have to do is stop Deshaun Johnson. Yep. I mean, they want to put pressure on the quarterback, and Otten, he's hot today. They can't do it with just four guys, so they're blitzing, but that means single coverage on Johnson. Ah, it is a fine-looking sunset. And over here at the Rose, that's downtown, and over here at the Rose Bowl, it's a fair golden glow on the old San Gabriel. Chris Miller and Anthony Volson now will be the deep people. For Southern California. Owens getting ready to kick it off. 26 points now for Northwestern. They close to within five. And the kick is high and it is long. And uh, back into the end zone and Chris Miller will not return it. So the Trojans begin first down at their own 20. Here are the San Gabriels up behind the Rose Bowl. It's a great place to watch a football game. Really in the bad feet in the house. Really a nice old stadium. And, and the field is in such great shape. Yep. Uh, Keith, we were down there yesterday. Look at, look at what Sean has done. 10 receptions, 199 yards, a touchdown. That's a Rose Bowl record. I remember last year in the bowl game, were they in the, were they in the Cotton Bowl, I think? Or he had, yeah, had a yeah. lot of catches in the, in the game last year. Of course, he had 90 during the season this year. They go to work out of a familiar old formation, the straight eye, putting Johnson in motion and run the ball. This is Delon Washington working in the traffic, and there's a penalty flag down. I think the Trojans have made another big mistake here. They got a hold of somebody and hung on. Holding USC. John doing a little lecturing on the side. <laughs> Lobbying, too. It's a 10 yard penalty. Here's 20. Keith Ryan Padgett, number 75, is back onto the field. They took him off, looked at his ankle. It's a high ankle sprain, and the trainer told me it's an injury he sustained about six weeks ago. They have put a brace on it, but they're not sure whether or not he'll be able to go in the ball game. He is definitely testing it. He wants to go back in. Keith? And that would be the same uh, leg that he had that brace on before. Uh -huh. huh? Otten down, throws, caught by one of the linemen. Penalty flag. There's a lot going on there. He certainly was. Uh, you, you think it's illegal catching of the ball. But let's see. If it was tipped by one of the Wildcats, it's, uh, it's a legal catch. was going down and just threw the ball forward. The offensive lineman caught it, which is illegal. Unless one of the Wildcats hit the ball. It's illegal. Legal touching. Offensive lineman. Pressure is going to come from the left side. Little twist in there between the two tackles. It's 95. That's Rice in there that gets on him. Houghton just tries to toss it forward. Rice has been a bulldog all day. He hasn't given an inch. A number 95, big senior, 270 pounds. He and Larry Curry are picking up a lot of space in the middle of the field. Rice has started uh, 26 straight games. Ball is all the way back on the five-yard line. Yeah. This is a pretty ugly series for Trojans. Second down and 25. Deshaun is in the slot. They run it with Woods. And he gets to the seven. So it'll be third down and 23. 
Don Holmes and Ray Roby combining for that tackle. Along with Don Holmes. Gain of two. I'll tell you what, Northwestern, if they can pin them back here, they're going to come out of this with pretty good field position. And the way things are going for them, look out. Third and 23. Be careful you don't get sacked in the end zone here if you throw it. He's throwing it. And it is tipped. It is intended for Washington. And he can't get to it after it's tipped. And so they will have to put it from the end zone. It's a big defensive series right there. For those of you uh, around the country and around the world who have not seen Northwestern play this year, I think you're seeing a little bit of the reason why they have been so good. They play every play. They were down by uh, 17 points and have not given up. Brian Musso is waiting at midfield. And John Stonehouse standing well back in his end zone. His first kick and only kick today was 39. That is a very low snap, but he handles it and just killed it. He knocked it all the way back to the Northwestern 43-yard line. That's a 50-yard punt when they solely needed it. At a minute and 35 to go in the third quarter. 31-26. And the Wildcats, who started this half with that ball first down at their own 43, sitting right in the same position. First attempt to Northwestern at the Wildcats 43. a look at what uh, Northwestern in the second half has done. Two field goals, two touchdowns, four possessions, four points. Autry. Got him. Short of the line of scrimmage. Lost a yard. If Yanni making the tackle. He's been pretty quiet today. Is he you called uh, Ismaili a disruptor yes. for Northwestern? If Yanni but his Bailey's fast has been that. Exactly, but, but they can move his Bailey and Northwestern around a lot more than they can yes, move uh, with Yanni. <laughs> Autry now 88 yards and 25 carries. Second down, 11. Snare back. Pitches it out to Autry. Got him one on one. And the job is handled all right. By number 42, Brian Kelly. But a pretty good gain on the play as he puts it on the SC side of the field at 49. And it'll be third down and two. It's a nice safe play. Your receivers are going to come down here, but the man you want to get it to is Audrey. Schnur takes five steps, looks at the two receivers, comes off, dumps it. Now you got a great situation. You got your main guy out there, one on one on the corner. Actually, a pretty good tackle by Kelly. 16 out of 26 for 252 yards. Adrian Autry is in the backfield now. And Snurr's throwing. Pass is complete to McGrew, the fullback. And he'll have a first down as they finally wrestle him out of bounds at the Trojan 38. So taking what they can get. Nickel and dime here once in a while. Yeah. Quarter. Like that, he's smiling. You know, that's very similar to the play they scored a touchdown on. Both fullbacks come over this side. In the touchdown play earlier, they both blocked. This time, play action and dumped it to one of the fullbacks. Ryan Padgett returns to the field. Oh, they strapped him up. And the big guy who wants to be a doctor. Back out there. Adrian Autry remains in the backfield. Darnell is off the field, resting. Adrian has it. And he'll pick up two yards at best. Adrian is from Long Grove, Illinois. 189 pound redshirt freshman. Sean say we've scored 31 points in three quarters, and we're still in a dogfight here. Who are these guys? I think that's one problem back in the Big Ten, Keith, that for years past, all the teams in the Big Ten, they'd always play Northwestern. Hey, it was uh, an easy game. It was like an off week. But 
they couldn't believe it this year when they played them. It was the same colored uniforms, the same team. But hey, these guys, what's happened to these guys? They're a heck of a lot better. Five point difference, and we'll return for the finish after this message and a word from our ABC station. And now to the punctuation period of what has been to this juncture one of the great stories in recent college football history the turnaround of fortune at Northwestern University they're trailing by five points 31 26 they own the football second down and nine at the Southern California 37 yard line as we begin the final quarter Schneer back a little quick pop good for the first down it's Musso Brian Musso pounding his way inside the 15 and finally thrown down at the 13. It's like a wide receiver screen. Musso is going to come in motion across the formation. Now watch as all the offensive linemen in purple shirts are going to show up. Look at this. It's a little screen. At 61 is Chabot. Now watch as he holds on to the ball here. That's Phillips who misses a tackle. Heron misses a tackle. Now he's holding on to the ball right there. The fumble that he had earlier. Not this time. And it's first down. Northwestern at the Southern California 14-yard line. And a big play behind the line of scrimmage by Darrell Russell. As he takes Darnell Autry down. Back at the 17. Darrell Russell has been a force in this conference ever since he came in to USC last year as a freshman. As I mentioned, six starts last year, 340 pounds, and, and just a babe. 320. Well, he, may have had, he may have had his pregame meal, but just a babe, he's only a sophomore. Big frame, 6'4". Second down and 13. Her throws hard. Pass is incomplete. It was intended for Bates. Incomplete. We go to Swinney. Well, Keith Jackson, Northwestern, everyone keeps thinking that here's a football team that just wants to stay close. But throughout their 10-game winning streak, they have only been behind two times going into the third quarter against Michigan and against Illinois by excuse me going into the fourth quarter against Michigan and Illinois they keep continue just to put pressure on people John Robinson told me early in this day what he wanted to do was get on top of this ball club and not to keep it close right now they're threatening to score another touchdown Keith well SC's made the mistakes that got him in this race. Yes. third down and uh, good 13 there they go with Autry Darnell inside the 10 to the 9 penalty flag goes down you may have a face mask yep so USC really shooting themselves in the old foot nice call on third down Yanni is up, up, uh, up the field on his pass rush. Little draw play. There's the face mask right there. Got Phillips got his hand off of it, but Phillips missed the tackle a little bit earlier, and this time he used the face mask to bring him down. Yeah, if Yanni got up the field, ran himself right out of the play, that just went right inside of him. Here's a look at the third quarter. What went on in the third quarter? Total yards, 164 for. The Wildcats, uh, the Trojans, 92. 56 of that was on one play. Time of possession, big in favor of the Wildcats. USC has had seven penalties in this half. Well, that helps an offense. Third down and one, and uh, just inside the five, it goes to Darnell Autry, and he pounds his way in there for the first down. It'll be a first and goal for the Wildcats. with a total of 10 penalties and seven in this hand. But make another one. Yeah. That's eight penalties yeah. in this hand. Offside. Jump. It's... You know, one of the things they talked about in this Northwestern team was before when they were losing the last three years, there was no identity. 
the defense. Now at 95, they, they're, they're like a, a family. They're success. They trust each other. They believe it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a funny thing, but when you trust each other and believe good things are going to happen and hang together, you have to have somebody at the helm. And Barnett has done a great job of that. First and goal from the two. And it's Darnell Autry. Touchdown. Look out, you're going to get a flag. Autry has 28 carries, 99 yards, and three touchdowns. Well, Cardos is 78, Chabot is 61. The tight end there, 83, is Drexler. Cardo is uh, 46, who gets a crushing block. And I tell you, Autry just waits for them to develop and has belief and patience that it's going to be there. And Northwestern's going for two. They've had five possessions and scored all five times. The last five possessions. I wonder what he said at halftime to him that uh, got him. They got him fired up some way. I'll tell you that call that he made after the first score, the onside kick, uh, was a gutsy call. One for two. They have the lead at 32-31. They lead for the first time today. They're trying to increase the lead as Schnurr throws down the middle. Good. No good. Didn't hold it. Ball was drilled in and then came out. Drexler could not keep a handle on it. And so scoreboard has given it to him. But the scoreboard is wrong. And a tight it end, 32-31. Right Here's the play. Could have had this one. Phillips gets over, just gets his hand in and strips it. But that may be a big uh, missed extra point, two-point conversion. Wildcats by one. Numbers for Autry. Uh, you know, he's a theater major at Northwestern, an aspiring actor. Uh, he met uh, fellow Northwestern alum Charlton Heston the other day at. Universal Studios and says he doesn't have any job offers laying, laying around yet, but he would like to come back and have one later on down the road. Marvin Powell the third was the young man that stepped in there and picked up that low short kick and returned it. And the Trojans have pretty good field position tomorrow night on a all right, the ball is up at the 33 with Rad Otten staying in there at quarterback. And pressure coming, gets it away down the middle, underneath the coverage, and it'll be a gain of about five, maybe six yards to the tailback, DeLon Washington. Well, you know, uh, John Wayne, Duke Wayne, uh, was uh, advertised as a football player in Southern California, but actually back in those days, when he, didn't, he wasn't really the Duke yet. He was known as Marion Morrison. But there was a fellow from Alabama like named Johnny Mac Brown that went right out of the backfield and right on to a white horse and started shooting that guy. <laughs> and had yep. a long career. Yes, he did. Second down, four. And it's Washington tripped up. Number 95, Matt Rice had the penetration, took the feet away, and he gained only two when he had a pretty good sized hole on the right side of the line. So they're clutching and grabbing. It's a group that plays very, very well together as a team. The breakdown of the quarters. USC's eight out of 12 on third down conversions. And they've got another one as the tight end, Tyler Cashman. That's Pat Cashman's son. Pat was uh, made a big play. Interception and return for a touchdown in the epic struggle between the USC and UCLA in 1967. It's just a nice throw and catch. Their scores you see from games about the country today and through the holiday season involving the teams from the respective conferences. There were some surprises. Yes, East Carolina well. was a mm -hmm. surprise. Virginia Tech, both of them winning with defense. 
That goes up and on first down from the 47. The ball is batted down, intended for John Allred. Donnie Holmes, every time we call Donnie Holmes's name, you've got to you got to mention there, you got to think about uh, Pat Fitzgerald, the defensive player of the year in college football who broke his leg in a couple of places, not playing today, and Holmes is filling in admirably for him in that position as you take a look at Fitzgerald. That was a wild man. He's flying around doing everything. Very bright, very intelligent. Yep, too, Keith. He just read the, uh, the cheats of the back slants of the offensive line. If they lined up a little closer, somebody could read all that stuff. Second down and 10. Otten looking for Johnson. Goes the other way, and he has Miller. And Chris Miller with a first down at the Northwestern 40. Eric Collier pounded Otten. Strong safety was coming and got a piece of it, but he got it away. And here's Collier here, Keith. He's going to put the pressure. But look at this group of three that he's throwing to. Collier gets there, just doesn't get there quick enough. And when you have three receivers running right there, Johnson is the one you want to worry about. So at the 40 of Northwestern, first down with Woods in the backfield. Here comes the blitz again, and Otten gets it away. And the ball is thrown behind the tight end, Johnny McWilliams. And he dropped it. That time, Otten had to move a little bit because of the pressure from the blitz. Again, uh, Otten's having a good day, Keith, and that's the reason if people have just tuned in, then they're expecting to see a little combination of the uh, two-quarterback system. Otten has played and played very well. John Robinson has used the two-quarterback system all year. I agree with it. And uh, I think he's taken a lot of unnecessary abuse. Second down and 10, 10 41 to play. 32 31, Northwestern getting come. the lead in the fourth quarter. The pass is dropped by Cashman. So McWilliams dropped one that was thrown behind him. Not a very good pass because Otten was under pressure and had to move. And that time Cashman had it, but uh, he had a lot of company and he was looking for some daylight. Yeah, the ball was thrown a little bit behind him because of the pressure that Otten was put under. In passing yardage, they're at 368. In rush yardage, they're at 10. Yeah, look at the pressure right here. From the far side is Ismaili, and 52 is Sharp from this side. This Third guy. and 10. Here they come again. Johnson has it. Keyshawn Johnson will get a mark inside the 30, and that's a first down. Ismaili was right there, but that's the strength of Johnson. He's tall and lanky and a tough guy. Well, they knew it. If, if, if you keep blitzing long enough, they're going to find him. Here's Johnson here as he goes down. Go ahead and run it. I'll show you something. Watch as the two men are going to look for him. Stop it right here. These two know that this is Johnson, and they're going to go for him. They just didn't get there quick enough. 11 catches, 210 yards. He owns the Rose Bowl record in yardage. First down from the 29, 32-31, Wildcats are leading, remember. Parker coming across the middle, the ball is slapped down. As Otten tried to throw a little soft lob to Parker coming across, he just didn't put any air under it. Might be getting a little tired because he's been on his back a lot. Casey Daly. Casey and, Daly, yeah, incidentally, been, playing defensive end for Northwestern, is out of Laverne, California. Yeah, he's a local guy. Not many uh, local, uh, as you take a look at Waholtz. Haven't been in. He's well rested. He's not played. Washington, the tailback. Washington with the ball. Well, that little skip right, skip left, and it was a skip left that got him in trouble. If he does, it just keeps on skipping right. He had some room. Sometimes whipping around will help you, and sometimes it defeats you. Here's a look at Daly Keith. He's in Southern California. You know, a year ago, he was uh, he was working at Disneyland. Uh, he had a summer uh, job, I mean, not a summer job, but a vacation job out there. Uh, he'd greet visitors. He was in the uh, 
Worked in the Jungle Cruise, he said. He had to wear a costume similar to Indiana Jones. That's the work of Brad Otten on third down, 9 of 11. He needs one here to make it an even 10. He doesn't get the ball up in the air. And he is again put flat on his back by the pressure. That was Casey Joe Wright. Daly. Maybe Daly or somebody Daly knocked Wright. that ball in the air. Wright knocked him down. And uh, it'll be fourth down. Looking left all of his way, moving, jumping around a little bit. Here's a look at the uh, coverage on Johnson. Double coverage, Collier. There you go, double coverage and maybe triple coverage. Plus a little hold. This is a 46-yard field goal try, the longest ever by Adam Abrams, 41. Stonehouse will hold it. Gomez will snap it. 46 yards for the lead. play and the Trojans back the lead by two. Pretty postcard. There it is. And a gorgeous day. We're ready to go now on 9.09 on the clock. 34-32, USC back to the lead, the kickoff. It is Ismaili waiting for it. He's got a big one going all the way out to the 38-yard line. Boy, has he had some tough runs on kickoff returns, and here's a penalty flag. Referee threw it. Personal foul, Northwestern. That's surprising. It'll be first and 25. Sunday on ABC Sports, Greg Norman, John. If number 42, Tucker Morris and the linebacker, when he had the USC, got that down on the ground, he was looking over him and he just kicked him and the official was right behind him to flag him. And so they've got themselves now in a bit of a problem. And uh, we thought it'd be first and 25, but it's moved back where they're calling it first and 10. And the Trojan defense is swarming a bit here. And uh, if Yanni is the man who makes that defensive play, and the loss is back from the 23 to about the 21. Or it'll be second down 11, 11 and a half. Running eight minutes and 35 seconds to play in the ball game, and USC 34 to 32, leading Northwestern. Biggest margin in the game at one time was 24-7. Trojan toned that. The Wildcats came back to take the lead in the fourth quarter. That pass is drilled at the 32-yard line to Dwayne Bates. And it is not yet a first down, but they're a lot closer to it now on third down. It'll be third down at about two. Bates has had himself a full day today, too. Yeah, he's got seven balls for 145 yards. Scored every time they've had the ball in the second half. Third and a yard and a half or so. At about two. And the Trojans are in the neutral zone. There was contact before the ball was snapped. If so, that's going to be nine penalties in the second half for Southern California, if we read that right. Well, there's more than one defensive lineman jumping, Keith. Yep. And Mr. that tells Stern me might have something. Exactly. Yeah. That tells me it's the quarterback's cadence. And that's that's all well and good. Uh, I mean, if, if you can if you can have a cadence that it's, that is non-rhythmatic, 
right there. And you usually get the ones that are closest. And those two guys are the closest to the quarterback because they hear you. The inflection and the, and the, uh, the timing between the huts. You can usually get them. And, and, and he's using it at good times. At third and one, he pulled them off sides. You don't want to use it all the time. That gives him a first down up at the 37-yard line. It's Nerd looking around throwing down the middle the ball is caught by Beasley right down the middle of the field at the USC 47 yard line Beasley has not caught many passes on the season he came in with only eight He's normally in there for his blocking he hurt himself on that play. yeah he did oh the Wildcats move it again but you know, Keith talking about that non-rhythmatic cadence and what Schnurr has been doing, pulling him off sides. You know, it's just another way that he can help. You know, a smart quarterback, competitive. That's the, one of the ways he beats you. And they get him out of bounds. At about the 43 or so. Schnurr is 20 of 31 now on the day for 313 yards. So both quarterbacks are over 300 yards. Schnurr, that's probably his career day, too. I don't think that, uh, that uh, they don't throw that much. Or they don't want to throw that much. Let's put it that way. Darnell Autry has 30 carries now for 100 yards. And, uh, Autry's used to that. He normally carries. He's averaging 32 carries a game. And Barnett reflects the philosophy of uh, John McKay. Ball ain't heavy and he don't belong to the union. <laughs> Ball ain't heavy. Snurr's <laughs> uh. pass intercepted. Carrying it is Jesse Davis. Down to the Northwestern 30-yard line. Snurr had his man, but on the run, couldn't deliver the ball. Try and get it to the receiver right here going across the field. As he rolls out this way, the safety back here is going to come get it. He rolls out. He looks back. Stop it right here. Got his man. He's open, but he overthrows it. And the man, the defensive man right behind him, comes to pick it off. And Jesse Davis, who has picked off uh, six, six turn takeaways already, gets his seventh for the Trojans. It's on the 31. Delon Washington is the tailback. He's got the ball. And he runs it down to about the 25 for six yards. This is Snurr's first interception, first big mistake of the day. He gets him going one way. Nobody in his face. He can see very clearly. He knows he threw it. He jumps up high. You know, some guys like Davis always in the right place at the right time. He's a fifth year senior. It's his fifth interception on the year. Second down and four for Southern California at the Northwestern 25. there the penetration was by number 68 for the Northwestern Wildcats Mike Warren the Goodyear blimp one of the most enduring symbols in sports in this country providing the aerial pictures today from the Rose Bowl and out over the Rose Parade this morning Glenn Hampton up bright and early with Nick Nicolari and the crew I heard them buzzing over the hotel just as the sun was it's been a glorious day, hasn't it? Yep. 34 32 ball game. Southern California, third down and four. They're coming. Ball is away. Caught by Barnum out of the backfield, and he's got a first down. Nice play by Otten. So Terry Barnum one more time steps up to make a clutch catch of a pass that was delivered under duress. Exactly. You got the two linebackers blitzing. Here's Barnum coming out of the backfield. When he sees the linebackers blitzing, he's going to get the ball out real quickly. Right now, it's a free release by the back. Safety's got to come out and cover. 
Nobody on Holmes. He had to throw it. Good play. So it's first down. Wildcats backed up, trailing by two, fighting for their life. 5-0-3 to play in the ball game. It's Washington running the right side. I'll tell you what, the Northwestern defense has done what they wanted to do. They have shut down the running game of Southern California. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't know if they've shut it down. I think I don't think John Robinson and Mike Riley and those guys have chose to run. I think they've I, they, they came out throwing. You're now at a point, though, Bob, where you, you, you need to run. freeze it. You need to run. You're right. You're right. That's the ball. But you need to score some points, too. You're only ahead by two points. Put it on the 16. Second and seven. Do it again. Washington can't get loose. Number 52's got him for the nap of the neck. Tim Sharp takes him down. He gets two yards. And now they're going to be looking at third down and five. With 4.07 to play in the game. From director Oliver Stone. The bridge of the 1996 Rose Bowl brought to you by... Third down and four. Woods in the backfield, and they've been pretty good on third down in 1995. Martin to throw it. Didn't, did he get it? I guess it's all good. It's Keyshawn Johnson. Boy, he hammered that thing into it, didn't he? Didn't have to do much. Lock it. Johnson's right here, and the double coverage is going to be right behind him. He's just going to go run to the inside and swing back to the outside. Go ahead and run it. Two guys. That's just good. You know, it's, it's, you can't stop him. It's first and goal. Delon Washington is in on the field at the seven-yard line, first and goal. And give it to Washington. Running over the left side, down to the two. Our attendance today is 100,102. And they've seen a very good football game. It's second down and goal. The ball at the two. 34-32 Southern California. Clock running at three minutes and ten seconds to play. Northwestern with two timeouts remaining. What they're talking about right there is stop, number one, stop them, and number two, strip them of the ball. Washington over the top, touchdown. Point try now at 255 to play in the game. Adam Abrams. Good. It's 41 32. And the game celebrating 50 years of association between the Big Ten and Pac-10 has been a gem. Darnell Autry is out now with Ismail, the deep people to return the kickoff from Southern California. 41-32, two minutes and 55 seconds. The number three team in the country trailing. It's a squib kick, and it's going to result in very good field position for Northwestern. The ball is scooped up and returned beyond the 40 out to the 42 by John Burton. Probably a lot of people sitting around and saying, why squib kick? Well, that wasn't the idea. The idea was to kick it low on the ground, bouncing, bouncing down around the 10-yard line, 5-yard line, to mess up a return. 
That ball didn't go as far as uh, John Robinson and the coaching staff wanted, and it turned out to pretty good for Northwestern. A nine-point advantage. Let's see what the Cats can do with it. Schnurr sets him up. Double wide top of the screen from the 42. Gets his pass away underneath. It is incomplete off the hand of Beasley. Number 86 coming across the middle. The executive producer of ABC Sports is Jack O'Hara. Today's game produced by Bob Goodrich, who is the coordinating producer for ABC's college football and directed by Drew Essikoff. Very well. Those Good two job, guys, guys were off in uh, Buffalo on Saturday. Oh. Jimmy Rustler is the associate coordinating producer for college football. Back goes Schneer on second down and 10. Pressure coming. He got it away. No, he didn't. Didn't he get it away? The ball rolling around up to midfield. The referee was right behind him. And he's not going to apparently give him referee didn't an incomplete anything. pass. If Yanni was on the ball, yeah, see, now he, now he, now he says it, it was an incomplete forward pass, but it seemed very clear to me that the, he had tried to throw it. Randy Crystal, the referee right behind him, didn't signal anything. If Yanni was tormenting him. Well, I guess you can you can you can consider that being a forward pass or more arm coming forward, although I think he was just pumping it. But uh, it did look like uh, it was it was coming forward, but I don't think he was going to throw it. But Third is, down and ten. This is not the area where Northwestern likes to be in. Passing such situ must passing situations. He got to run it now. He got a first down out of it. So the young man from St. Louis, Missouri, picks up a first down for the Northwestern Wildcats as he puts the ball on the Southern California side of the field at the 46-yard line. Our college football today was produced by Charles Coupland, directed by Calvin Haywood. Our technical director here at the Rose Bowl, Gary Larkin. Our associate director, Bruce Clark. The pass is complete to Darnell Autry to the 40. They've still got two minutes and nine seconds to play in the ball game. Balls advanced down to the 40 yard line of USC. Our statistician is Dave Bernson and our spotter is Todd Barry. They've both been here since we planted the first tree. <laughs> been around here a while, haven't they? Yep. Put it on the 40. Second down and four. Working in the middle, it is Autry. And the big sophomore is close to a first down. I don't think they're going to give it to him. USC they want to measure, though, it's that close. And if so, that's a break for the catch. Exactly, it stops the clock. Now you've got to get your next play ready to go. Now they're going to go ahead and mark it. And they won't huddle, they'll just go. We're now inside two minutes. Clock running at 150. Schneers still got it. Looking around. Now he goes and got his first down. No, it is not complete at all. Yeah. Waved it off. Who was it? Darnell Autry was the man trying to make the catch, and he was absolutely sandwiched, and he just couldn't pull it in. Yeah. So it's fourth down. Passing situations, Northwestern in the Big Ten was last in third down conversions. It's just, it's not an area they're strong in. They like to avoid it, but uh, they can't avoid this. John Robinson in his fourth Rose Bowl as a head coach at Southern California. Looks like he may win his fourth straight Rose Bowl game. Autry with the ball for the first down. Pops it up the middle, and we'll take it down to about the 31-yard line. So they go to the big guy, and Autry, who carried the ball a record 355 times this past season, gained over 100 yards in every single game of the season. And he gives him another first down. Schnur throws to Autry, and they'll take him down at about the 26. Second down and five. Darnell Autry comes out for a little rest. And Adrian Autry replaces him. And Schnur back. Goes down the middle and then goes the other way. And it's caught by Bates. 
He looked down the middle the whole time and then came back to Bates. Bates made the catch, but there's a penalty flag back up on the 33-yard line. Hold the phone. It's against Northwestern. Take a look at offensive line. Number 78 is Cardos right here on the outside. Yeah, he got, he got his arm out there. You know, Schnur threw that ball to the outside. Uh, Cardos won the hold. But there was a receiver to the inside, Keith, down the middle of the field yeah. that was more wide he was open. Wide open, yeah. That's Bates where I was. thought he was going with it. Yeah. Instead, he went to Bates in the corner. Well, Northwestern on the season, as far as penalties were concerned, were not penalized very often. They were like the third fewest penalized team in the Big Ten. That holding call backs them up. It's a big penalty. It makes it second down and 21 now. Musso with the catch. They're still fighting. One minute to play in the game. 41-32. That was a big holding penalty there. The touchdown, he would have an onside kick, had a chance. Yep. Now it looks pretty grim. Pretty grim. Third down and 10. Schnurr's pass to the sidelines. Bates is out of bounds. He made the catch all right, but he was out of bounds. So it's an incomplete forward pass. The clock stops at 41 seconds to play. 41-32, USC. Well, that was a tough year for John Robinson uh, and the Trojans. It was, uh, they won their first six. They won, uh, they won eight of 11. They were, they finished eight, two and one, but they lost to Notre Dame and they lost to UCLA. And not, there's not a player on this team, the Trojan team that has ever beaten UCLA or UCLA. And now they have finally, it looks like they're going to at least win a, win, a, win a Rose Bowl. Well, the, they were 6-0. and oh. They went to South Bend, Indiana, and just got trounced. Yeah. And then uh, came back to tie Washington to win the conference and then lost to UCLA. Didn't play well at Oregon State. And, uh, this was sort of a redemption game for them, and they played very well. But I would say this, that this Cinderella can dance. This Cinderella can dance, and, and, and the Big Ten knows it. And, and next year, Keith, in talking with some of the Northwestern coaches and asking, is this an aberration, or, or, or are you guys going to continue this? I, I, they're going to be very good next year. And, and, but I don't think the road will be easy for them because everybody in the Big Ten will be looking for them. Yeah, they won't surprise anybody. Yeah. All right, 41 seconds. It's, uh, it's fourth down and 10, so they'll go for the field goal. That gives them a chance for an onside kick. This is a 49-yard try. It's big. And he hit the upright. No good. I mean, that's me. 35 seconds to play. It hits the upright. <laughs> well, it's over. Yep. And, Barnett, and Barnett knows it. Well, it was a good one. Most enjoyable. All USC has to do now is snap it a couple of times, maybe even one time. And uh, we'll go home. Yeah, it was a great year, though. This fellow's a class act. Yeah, he is. It was a great year. Tour of his kids. The Big Ten is wide open nowadays. It's not no longer the, the big two and the little eight. There are a lot of teams in the Big Ten that are capable of winning that title. This fellow right here is a class act. Too, yes, he is. John Robinson has done nothing but good things. He's been back three years and he's either won the title in the Pac-10 or finished second the three years he's been here. So the final seconds will tick away, and this game will go into the history books with the final score of Southern California 41, Northwestern 32. We'll be back for the presentation in a moment. Welcome back to the Rose Bowl, where we have the trophy tr presentation. The president 
of the Tournament of Roses Association, Bud Greist, will make the presentation to John Robinson. Thank you, Lenny. <laughs> Thank you, John. Thank you, John, for one of the most exciting games in a long time. And as winners of the 1996 Rose Bowl, I present you the Leishman Trophy, emblematic of the winner. John, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of our players, all our players and our fans, all Trojans, this is a great day, and we thank you very much. It was a great football game, and our guys deserved it. Coach, hold on a second. We, we've got to ask you a few more things here. A lot of people came into this ball game looking at the Trojans. You know, and as you said, coming into this ball game, just throwing the Trojans into the mix as father for the Northwestern team. This had to be the greatest game your team played for you this afternoon. We, we knew all those things. Uh, we were definitely the straight men, but we're not now. <laughs> this senior class has gone out champions, and that's a great deal for us. <laughs> Let's go. John, you, you, come, you come into a game, you're known as a running coach, you put the ball in the air, you said you wanted to be aggressive, you stayed with it through the entire afternoon. Yeah, I, you know, we wanted to come out and take the initiative, maybe tire them out a little bit. They did a great job of coming back. This was a great football game, and uh, we're proud of our people. Coach, thank you. Keyshawn Johnson, congratulations. Thanks a lot. You set a new Rose Bowl record for catches and receptions. 12 catches, 216 yards, one touchdown. Tell us about this afternoon. Yeah, fun. You know, the thing about it, you know, Northwestern, they were talking a lot of things in the Rose Bowl, and that's the thing that got Texas Tech in trouble last year. They got to talking, and I just laid low, and I didn't say anything to them all day, and I just said, hey, we're going to get the ball in my hand, and I'm going to do a fine job. Well, that was a tough ball game. Tough ball game. They played well. I, I especially respect their secondary, their offense. They moved the ball up and down the field and scored some points, but we hung in there, and look what happened. Okay. Thank you. We'll go back to Keith Jackson. All right, Swanee, thanks very much. Your final score again, 41-32. Number three lost in the Rose Bowl. Number one and two can have at it tomorrow night. The aerial pictures today from the Goodyear Flimp Eagle out of Carson, California, piloted by Captain Nick Nicolari. Now stay tuned, on, except on the West Coast, for Sneakers, the ABC Monday Night Movie, next year on ABC.